to notice who actually won the season, David. I did, and you know why I noticed? Why? Because I picked her for the other season. <laughs> <laughs> who is it, David? Introduce her. This is the one, the only, Sarah Lacina. Hi, Sarah. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, we are so glad you're on the show. <laughs> and I'm so I'm embarrassed to admit that. For Kageon, she was my pick. I was so rock solid. She's a she's a cop, and I, I'm all about police officers. Let's, let's do it. Let's win. And one did win, but not the one that I thought was going to win. So. Yeah. Well, David, you weren't the only one that picked me that I let down. So, and then I didn't get a lot of people picking me this season, and like I really shined. So, yeah. way um, way to go, David. You let that her was down. actually my plot the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to play really bad the first time, just so <laughs> yeah. my expectations are really low for when I return, right. and then I'm just going to like hit a grand slam. So wow. it worked. So, it well, worked. What, what's going to happen yeah. the third time? What's the third plan? Yeah, there's not a third plan. <laughs> <No. yet. laughs> no. Congratulations, Sarah. You succeeded in your goal. Oh, thank yes. you. Yeah, yes. mission accomplished. That's right. That's right. Well, if you are new to our uh, podcast, welcome. Our goal is for you to have a lot of fun and to laugh and to sit back and enjoy and not worry about being able to listen to this in front of your kids or at work, loudly on your computer at work. We're not everyone's cup of tea, but just add some sugar and you might like it. <laughs> so a uh, real quick show note before we get to going, if you've been asking yourself all season, what in the world did Troy Zan even do this season? We never saw him. Well, he's joining us next week to tell us everything. And David, he was originally scheduled for this week, correct? Ah, uh, it was up in the air. Well, yeah, yeah. Just go, just go with it. He was scheduled <laughs> for this week, right? He, yep. He has it. Yeah, he has it yeah. confirmed for next week. So I'm still. Well, just like Final Tribal, Sarah boots him out of the way and comes on this week. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk to Troy. He'll be on next week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's going to be on next week. So, All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for some. Yeah, I, I re-edited. What? That was horrible. I re-edited it. Do you like it? Yeah. Yes. That music just gets my heart going again when I hear yeah, it. Yeah, I bet. I bet. David, I'm she, not she's thinking, are we coming out of commercial yet to get my check? Are we coming out of yes. commercial? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now let's read the votes. <sighs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. Well, welcome to the show, Sarah. David, uh, why don't you start the conversation, start talking about things and well, ask well, questions. For, for those, yeah, if you get into our chat room, you are not allowed to say, I picked you, Sarah, unless you have proof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody has proof. That's right. That's right. Unless That's you're in right. our front office pools and you got the full amount of points, which I didn't, but I yeah. changed it midway. I had to apologize to Troy. I told him, you're a friend, dude, so I'm going to pick you. And then when I got crickets back, I said, I didn't, I didn't get crickets back. But anyway, um, I want to go back to if, my first question. It goes back to the end of Kageon. Sure. And, and my question is, one, I knew you wanted to play again because yeah. it was like when you went out, you already started thinking about the next time. Mm -hmm. How soon after Kageon did you get a hint that you were going to be able to play again? You remember? Um, yeah. So obviously, like when I went out in Kageon, it definitely like I was not satisfied. And a lot of survivors, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand is it's really hard to get closure. And like, luckily, I got closure after this season. But you literally like for for three years now, in between getting to play, I have thought about Survivor in and out. Uh, my husband and I literally talk about it constantly. So it's kind of weird to like, um, not have it be really that big a part of our life anymore because it's it's done and re realistically like my survivor career is done right. and so um, after Kageon, um I when I returned home then I got pregnant and so clearly I wasn't able to go um, on the next season I, I think they called to see if I would be interested in playing again but obviously not for the second chance voter or, or anything like mm -hmm. that and then um, so coming up for Game Changers, I got the phone call whenever they were making them. Uh, and I kind of, I had an idea that um, I would probably be getting a call since they had kept in touch the year before. And then um, sure enough, when I got it, it wasn't like, a, are you interested? It's, we want you to come out. Will you come out? And so obviously, I'm not going to turn it down. Right. Are, you, are you one of those former players that has the suitcase by the door at all times? 
Um, my suitcase wasn't packed, but I, I'm telling you, it's it's almost like a like a not healthy feeling that you constantly wow. have if you don't have closure. And I think that's why you know a lot of fans don't like returning seasons. And, I, and honestly, I don't blame them for that. Um, but the survivors themselves are dying to go back because they realize their mistakes and they want you know redemption. And mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to move on when you know you maybe made a couple mistakes that you could change and you would do differently. In the grand scheme of things, every game's going to be different and things can happen that don't go your way and, and do. And to win the game, it truly has to be a perfect storm. And that's how I describe it. I, I don't think anyone can win without it just being a perfect storm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like the opposite for Aubrey. It was the imperfect storm. Right. And that goes to show like how good of a player Aubrey is, is because look how far she made it, not once, but twice. And she had like the worst hand dealt to her all season yeah. and look how far she goes. So mm -hmm. it speaks volumes for how good Aubrey is at the game. Um, but you, I mean, you really do, everything has to come together. And, and I could talk for hours over the 39 days of where if this would have went this way, this, I wouldn't have won. If that would have went that way, there are things that I had nothing to do with. I truly believe the turning point in my game was um, when Malcolm got voted out and I had nothing to do with that, you know? Right. So everything has to fall in place in order, in order to win. I don't care how good you are. What, what about Malcolm being voted out was the turning point of your game? Well, okay, so I started out with JT, and I was really close with JT on Nuku. And then um, Aubrey and Malcolm were really close, and but also Malcolm and Sandra were close. And then Troy, Zan, and Brad were obviously close, and they were in with Sandra in a pregame alliance. And so Malcolm getting voted out broke that up because Aubrey and I had kind of talked. Had he not gotten voted out, Aubrey would have been Malcolm's, you know, side chick. I would have been JT's. Sierra would have been Brad's. Um, you know, Andrea would have been Ozzy's. And the boys would have ran the game. They would have told us where to vote. And that's how it would have been a total alpha game. Um, but, you know, getting Malcolm out of there really chopped it off at the knees. And, and it turned the game upside down. I truly believe that's the turning point in my game. And I had nothing to do with it. Wow. Yeah, so like you said, it's the perfect now, storm type of thing. Yeah. So when you saw the cast for the first time, well, actually, I want to ask you another question. Just if you wouldn't, if you would expand on it, if sure. you want to, you mentioned that the finale about the phone calls you got. Yeah, from one right. Particular winner. What? So what was that about? Okay, so um, obviously, on a returning season, it's no surprise that people communicate and. Um, mm -hmm. Tony, Tony and I were, were from the same season and we know each other and really we kind of both stay out of the survivor loop. Like there's a lot of people that really stay in it and Tony mm -hmm. and I were kind of out of it. And so we would literally talk like every single day, but just as well, we're friends, we have the same job. We both have kids the same age, you know, things like that. Um, but also Tony has like kind of a boring job now, you know, he sits at a desk um, at the police department. He's not out on patrol anymore. So his time zone and my time zone are different. And so <laughs> when I'm getting a phone call at five in the morning, it's six for him, you know, and he's, he's up and moving around. He's like, get up, you bum. And he just, the guy, once he found out he was going back, he doesn't shut off. He can't stop thinking about it because right. he goes a hundred miles a minute. And so he's got to call me constantly to talk to me about this and say this and that. But I would, I, I promise you on everything, Tony and I did not have a pregame alliance because mm -hmm. he literally told me, we are talking in real life now. You are my friend. And if I tell you something now and I go against it out there, you have a reason to never forgive me. And, and he goes, so game is game. Real life is real life. Yep. And um, so I, he goes, I'm not going to target you, but if your name comes up, I'm writing your name down. And, and so we had that understanding and that's the honest to God's truth. There was no pregame alliance between, I mean, at this point I would admit it. I mean, cause yeah, right. we had, we didn't even get to play together. So what would be the harm in saying, Oh yeah, sure we did, but we yeah. truly didn't. We did talk every single day, 
but it's just because the guy is just on all the time, you right. know, and, and, but I would say I am too, because we're constantly processing how we're going to play and this and that. And having those conversations with Tony really helped me because he, he would drill it into my head. This is real life. That is game. This is real life. That is game, you know, and I was able to separate. And I think that was a key in winning. And I think a lot of people that I played with don't um, don't really comprehend it the way Tony and I do. But but because they still have feelings involved, it doesn't mean if I told you something that I'm a bad person or a liar and or whatever. But we were playing a game, exactly. and so it was nice to go in, kind of free of all of that, knowing. I can do and say what I have to do because I'm out here for business. All right. But then everybody tries to make you feel guilty about it. Oh, sure. And I, and I really did. And that's honestly why I, I wouldn't want to play again because yeah. um, I leave and like watching it back really isn't fun. You see people's feelings hurt. Final tribal council. I felt like a total piece of crap yeah. and mm -hmm. because I'd hurt people. Like you can see Andrea is really upset and people are like, I feel gross, you know, that you did this and I'm like, gosh, that no one ever wants to hear that. And it's like, I did this to people. Is it worth it? And I mean, yeah. obviously you can sit here now and go, well, yeah, it was. And I think everyone is smoothed over, but when you look back on it and, and uh, several of my castmates have, have said this is the reason you get the anger in the beginning is because you're playing with two, three and four time players and they got had again. And mm -hmm. they're so you have frustration and a lot of people won't take responsibility for their own actions. Right. So they want to blame it on somebody else. And yeah. I'm not saying I didn't, you know, um, backstab people. Um, but, but it, it's the name of the game now. And the first time I played, I didn't do that. I refused to write Trisha's name down. And that's what made Cass really be like, I can't work with this girl. So that was lesson number, like the biggest lesson I learned was you can't, even if these people are your friends, you have, you can't not be willing to write their name down. Right. And so, so yeah, that was a huge takeaway going into this season. See, see I don't right, so understand why can't more, I mean, maybe it's personality because you got somebody, am, yes, am I echoing, echoing to y'all? Yes. Great. You have somebody. There I'm not. You have somebody like M like Michaela, and she's like, "Way to go! You got me. Cool. That's the game." So is it just personality? I mean, why why do they get so upset? It's the game. Right. Okay. So Michaela and Zeke obviously are huge. Like Zeke's a huge fan, so he's like, "Yeah, you got me. You did great." Michaela's like, "Anyone who doesn't vote for you is just bitter," and I truly believe that too. Um. But everybody else is hurt because I think they think they're better players. And yeah. I think when they saw me, and, and I'll tell you that you, you were getting to that about when you found out it was game changers and whatnot. That's kind of a funny story too. But um, they looked at me as a nobody. And then... Um, Go ahead. Just read that later. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, they uh, looked at me as a nobody. And then they got... Not they got their butts whooped by a nobody, right? And so that's not really a good feeling, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and again, when it's your second, third, and fourth time playing, this could be and probably is your last shot. So if yeah. that's the case, um, you're done now, right? And that reality hits in, and that's right. why there's still the animosity and and whatnot. Yeah, it's it's like every every single one of them figured, oh well, I can win this, and Sarah's not going to beat me. And you have yeah. played every single one of them, right? Well, right. Er, everyone that you needed to, some of them you didn't even see, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, you really did outplay them. And uh, the only person that, well, okay, so if if Sari said, um, "Can y'all make a season around me?" They would do it. Well, oh, for sure, just like. Yeah. Yeah, I think they've done that in the past <laughs> yeah. for people. Yeah. Um, it, it just, right. Yeah. They're going to do a cops I, versus convicts. 
next no I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i, I put i had about five questions pop in my head through that last little all right segment. all right all right i'm sorry i'm sorry and, and they're all going to be out of order so i'm not going to ask them all at once but my first question is what's more stressful day one to day 39 or day 40 to the finale wondering if you got the votes um whew, that's a good question um because i read where you went back and forth with your husband i think i got him i don't think i got him yeah i think i got him, I I got him. um okay day it, it's two different feelings day one through 39 is paranoia anxiety worry um mental exhaustion whatnot um day 40 to the finale is just put it out of your mind so um i would say third playing the game was way worse than the than the weight now i didn't enjoy the weight either <laughs> but <Right. laughs> But uh, I would rather wait than have to go through that again. I mean, it is a very hard game. People, I think, underestimate um, how hard it is and mentally draining and emotionally draining more than it is physical. That's one thing I liked about this season was they showed several times when people as a group just kind of broke down around the fire. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see it a lot of times when people aren't winning rewards. Now, it's funny because people would be like, geez, you guys were eating all the time. Well, what you see is every three days, and that just so happens to be a reward, and that's, that's what makes TV. But when my first season, you know, we had the huge bag of rice, and then um, Trish um, opted for the second bag of rice ra rather than the um, clue to the idol. So – we had so much rice and I love rice and people were, were literally like, Oh, I can't eat it anymore. And I'm like, well, give it to me. I, I really thought I was gaining weight on my first season. Wow. Now this season, what we threw off the boat day one is all we had the whole time. And there wasn't any rice. So people are like, well, you had chickens. Well, when you have four chickens and they're not these big plump chickens, they're like s small and you have to share it with um, 10 people it's really not that much food. And then it's all of the- It's not even a nugget. It's not no. even a nugget. <laughs> <laughs> it really it, isn't. It wouldn't even make a nine piece. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it, then, then our pineapple and apples and stuff, I mean, that all was bad by like day four or five. So mm, we yeah. literally, this was really rough on me food wise. My first season, people are like, oh, you know, do you starve out there? And I'm like, no, my first season was great. And I'm like, I'm not even worried about not eating. And then this was awful. So then right. when you do win the reward, you eat. And it's almost better to go without because your body gets used to not eating. Mm -hmm. And then once you eat, you almost have to go through the withdrawals again. It's, yeah. it's terrible. <laughs> like, it's like if you're going on Survivor, you might as well do like a, you know, 20 day fast and then start it over again or something. Uh, right. <laughs> Why aren't you eating? I'm praying I'm on a fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that would help. All right, David, go ahead. I know you got lots of questions. So, well, so there's, there's two ends of a spectrum I want to cover. I first want to talk about two people and then I want to talk about two other people. Okay. We've already, we've already brought them up. Since you guys did not have the privilege or the opportunity to see Zeke and Michaela, what was the group um, group thought on these two kids coming into this game? And, you know, was there any quick conversations about what they might have done, who they could be? Uh, okay, so we obviously see – we know who everyone is except for Zeke and Michaela. When we right. see them, we obviously know that they're from the past season. When you're in Ponderosa pregame – you can't talk to anybody. And and I think Michaela was actually sick during that. I, I really never ended up asking her this, but I'm pretty sure she was sick because she was laying down all the time. Hmm. And um, it really didn't come off well for her. And I think that's why she was like, she had a lot of ground to make up because of pregame, everybody's looking at people and, and checking them out. And when we don't know Michaela at all, and all you see her doing is laying down or like we, well, I remember we're out doing our press stuff one day and they have like these pop-up tents and chairs. And then they have these tables that's that, that have food on them. She literally moved the food and laid down on one of them. And we're like, wow. what are you doing? You wow. know, but I, I think she didn't feel well and was sick because, you know, you have to keep in mind she came off another season. And even though she wasn't out there the whole time, she was still on that extent, the pre-jury trip 
which is in foreign countries and who knows what she was eating or drinking. And, and it, it, it still, a lot of people have, you know, issues after they come home, um, digestive wise and whatnot. So do you think that played into the social edit we got of her for the first half? Uh, absolutely. And people would sit there and go, well, we're not seeing this. Why everyone dislikes Michaela. Mm, well, everyone yeah. didn't dislike Michaela, but, um, that's like the first impression we get of her. And then once mm -hmm. the game starts, uh, she forgets that we don't know who she is at all. We know nothing about her. So it's, and even with Zeke, so they were treated like rookies, you know, they were treated mm -hmm. like this is their first season. Cause so, um, the first couple days people really, I don't know what happened over on Mana, but I can tell you like over with Zeke, we were trying to, everyone was doing their own thing and it was kind of like Zeke is doing, you know, whatever, because we're trying, you know, I'm talking to JT, I'm talking to Sari, and um, it, it wasn't a priority because nobody was making it a priority. We, everybody looked at them like they were freshmen. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so they were just kind of, please talk to me type of thing. Um, yeah. I mean, they had, Zeke went about it a different way than Michaela. It made Michaela mad. And, you know, she's like, I'm good at challenges. How come you guys don't realize this? Well, because mm -hmm. we never watched you. Right. Yeah. So, when she does, so when you watch the challenge where Sari goes across the beam and Michaela's at the sit out, people are probably screaming at their screens like, how did that happen? Well, we don't know if she's good at challenges at right. that point. And then, you know, um, attitude plays into it too. And then you see how she reacted. And But I, I also think for Michaela, rightfully so, it, it would be – Hard to be Zeke or Michaela going into a season where um, nobody knew you. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I didn't realize when I first watched it until I watched it again was that I was thinking, why in the world would anybody pick Sari to be on that challenge? Okay. And, uh, then, I, and then I figured out, well, she, she was had a captain. Yeah, she was a captain and she yeah. probably was like, oh crap, why am I a captain? You know, <laughs> but oh man. Yeah. So, yep. She was a captain. So what they do is they have a bag. It's got rocks in it and um, maybe like a, a two white rocks and, and the rest are black rocks or whatever. Right. I, right. I don't remember. So everyone sticks their hand in and pulls them out. And then whoever's got the two odd colored rocks. Yeah. Obviously. And then it's a school. So whenever Jeff says like, oh, that's a schoolyard pick, that's how they do it. You get captains, right. you draw for captains and then you you pick from there you rotate gender or do you pick yeah. whomever um no i think when it when rewards at stake people as much as they want to say that they pick strategically for okay who would i want to go on the reward with i i truly believe that goes out the window because you just want to win when jeff yeah. describes a seaplane or a helicopter and you know that that's what's coming mm -hmm. um you you i think you try and build the best team for yeah. yourself because you want to win. And I, I, I don't know, maybe people would like to take credit and say, I strategically did that, but I, I really don't believe that. I love those comments that reward. This is the team I wanted because it, it so-and-so is back at camp and I've got <laughs> yeah. exactly what I'm going to talk yeah. to. I, exactly. I don't, yeah. I don't, be, honestly, I don't believe that because yeah. you're kind of caught up in it. You, you, we are sleeping outside and you're, you know, not eating food and you're, you're going to go on a helicopter and sleep in a hotel. You're telling me that <laughs> you're making a strategic decision right now. No, you're going, and it's not like you have time to contemplate it. It's you're everybody's in front of you and you're like, Hmm, uh, who's going to do the best. And, and, but I will tell you, um, Sari and I were very close and she did do me a solid on this one. And I've never really thanked her for this. But on the helicopter reward, um, Sari had, uh, you know, picked me for the balance beam one where we lost. And mm -hmm. she was a captain for the helicopter reward, too. That was the word puzzle where we were in the um, chair that went up and yes. down, you know? Yes. yes. Okay. So it's like her turn to pick. And she looks at me and I give her this look like, don't you dare. And <laughs> she... <laughs> She didn't pick me because I, I think in my mind I would have been the next obvious pick. And then someone who's probably not as good at a challenge got picked or she picked them over me. So then Brad was a captain too. 
and it left um i mean obviously he he he's like well yeah i'm going to pick sarah so like I, she's really the reason i went on that reward i mean nice. our team solved it but she was going to pick me and i literally shot a look at her like nice. don't do it <laughs> so that is awesome i've gotten that look on the podcast before from Dwayne when i wanted to yeah. bring something up but you actually got it from me earlier when you made that comment yeah, but I did. It, it still hurts. <laughs> yeah, it still hurts back there. Now, on the other end of that spectrum of the two people, is somebody you just brought up. What about the two four timers? Was there any discussion about those two? Because they were on your tribe to start with. Yeah. Uh, okay. So right away, I my game plan was go talk to everyone because mm -hmm. um, you want as many options in the game as you can have. So don't limit yourself to people. Oftentimes, what you see is group a and group b and nobody wants to cross over because they just feel like i have to stick with my alliance well um, i mean you're playing a game for yourself it's called soul survivor it's not group right. survivor you know so um i wanted to make sure i wanted to be everyone's number one that was my goal be everyone's number one so i would and and also what i would do is only have private conversations with people so like if we were playing, um, I would let you two talk and I would just listen to everything that you're saying. And then mm -hmm. once like Dwayne walked away, then I would talk to you and mm -hmm. then I would figure things out because uh, for a couple of reasons is I was like, if I say something and you both hear it, the telephone game can start if one of you misconstrues mm -hmm. what I say and then it can turn into a well, Dwayne was there and Dwayne heard it. And But if you're only with one person, then it's your word against theirs. And you can say, no, they're lying. You know, that's not true. And so right. it's kind of, uh, you know, a way. Plus, it's more personal when, you know, if obviously you guys already said you're best friends. So clearly I'm the third wheel in this. So anything I say, if I say it to both of you, you guys are going to talk about that when I leave. If I yeah. don't say anything to both of you, you have nothing to talk about when I leave. Um, if, if that ever happens, he's first gone. I'm <laughs> yeah. uh, he knows it too. Sarah, you might want to get in the chat room because Sunday's how, there. How and, do you get in the chat and room? Aubrey is there, and they both keep oh. talk, and they both keep talking to you. And, how do you get in the chat room? Uh, go to Chatwing. Uh, what is it? Chatwing.com forward slash stwdd. Oh, yeah. And, and Aubrey's got a question. She said, am I still your number one, Sarah? <laughs> of course, you're always my number one, yeah. Aubrey. We just talked about you, Aubrey, just a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, Aubrey didn't go back to the beginning and hear the props she gave you at the beginning. Yeah. I did. I gave Aubrey major props, yeah. but it, it, she deserves it. She does. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like you said. I'll just go ahead and tell you, Aubrey. Uh, Sarah was talking about how it takes the perfect storm. And David and I, throughout the season, especially towards the end, kept talking about how Aubrey got the the imperfect storm it was like everything that could possibly go wrong was going wrong for aubrey so anyway and she says we were planning to vote you out right now that's what aubrey just said <laughs> 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 oh boy th this should be fun so anyway i can't anyway. get it i don't know how to get in the chat um open, an, open, another, tab, open okay. another tab and go to www.chatwing c-h-a-t-w-i-n-g.com forward slash stwdd so chatwing.com forward slash stwdd <laughs> aubrey she's a humble winner she schooled the crap out of all of us <laughs> oh see now she just now she just wants okay. my vote but but aubrey wait am i in here aubrey earlier oh. she said that she outplayed all of y'all that's what she said <laughs> she said y'all were just y'all were just yeah, a bunch wasn't of the way you just said i said it. like <laughs> they were <laughs> nothing see you thought i was the mean one see there you go all right are you in the chat room now? Let's see. I'm looking. I don't see you there yet. If all else fails, go to stwdd.com slash live, and the chat room is right there. Well, I'm in, but I think, do I have to log in? Yeah, you got to Yeah, log you in. might have to pick Facebook or Twitter or Google to log in. It'll just uh, ask. Okay. So that you can see what's going on, yeah. Yeah. All right. Excuse you guys. She's Louise. Okay, there hey. she Woo! is. All right, so now y'all are going to have your own little conversation. It's like we're not even here. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so I have a question for you. Well, no, David, you were talking – you were still asking her about the oh, – Yeah, when it, we were talking about Sari and Ozzy. I didn't name them, and she didn't either wisely. Oh, but okay, so the, – the, Yeah, the four-time players. 
Um, yeah, wait, can I have the chat up and the screen, or do I not need the screen up? Wait, which screen? Just put both screens you might, beside themselves. You don't have themselves. to look at us if you don't want to. No, just, just is... put... Okay, do you have your Google Hangout in, like, full screen so it takes up the whole screen? Yeah. Okay, put tap the... Do the little green button on the, uh, on the upper left of that window. Yeah. And it'll bring oh. it down to a window. And now you can have your chat wing beside it. Fun. So I got my notes over here. You're uh -huh. here. Chat's right there. So I know. Got you're it? like, how do you even make it through life? I don't know. Hey, this was a commercial for Google Hangouts and chatwing.com. So I hope yes. they appreciated that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, David, what was she saying? <laughs> but the, but was there any discussion? Thank you, Dwayne, for remembering me. Was there any discussion or thought or even from you about the four time players? Was there any? Okay. Hey, they cannot go to the end. Hey, we got to do this, this, that, and the other. Yeah. Um, so, Sari, right away, I could tell was on the outs um, because Ozzy and her kind of had. Um, you know, mm -hmm. some underlying issues from other seasons. So I went to Ozzy right away, but Ozzy's real quiet. And you basically, to, to get in an alliance with Ozzy, you say, hey, Ozzy, um, I want to work with you and go to the end with you. And he yeah. goes, you do? And you say, yeah. And he goes, okay, cool. And then now you have an alliance. Wow. All right, uh, let me write that down. Just in case. <laughs> do, do you have to say, Ozzy, you're amazing. Um, yes, it, it yeah. helps. I, yeah, I that does help. Yeah. But um, so then Can we get your um, autograph on this coconut while we're here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's so good to finally meet you. Yeah, I mean that stuff yeah. helps. Yeah. Um. So so immediately I could tell Sari was on the outs, and I teamed up with JT kind of right away. But then Sari is obviously trying to make um her alliance too. So Sari and Andrea and I get together um, in the woods real quick and we, we, you know, make a deal. And so at this point, day one, I'm already playing both sides. Right. And that's what I wanted because again, I want options. Um, so really um, Ozzy was kind of good to go because there was more of like a bromance between all the, the alpha males than um, people got to see because it didn't get to that point. Because like I said, when Malcolm went, that ruined, that flipped the game. Um, and so Ozzy was always okay. He was always fine. So there was no talk that it's his fourth time because they also, mm -hmm. I think people could tell that um, he wasn't going to ever change his game. And I think you could see it's his fourth time and he didn't change his game again. So if he right. played a fifth time, I really highly doubt he'd change his game again. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, but yes, definitely Sari was on the chopping block, not because she's a four time player though. I think, I think it was just because, she had um, beef with other people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, uh, it seemed like she was on thin ice at the beginning, and then she got her footing and did really well after that. Yeah. Um, well, okay, keep in mind, too, Sari didn't go to tribal council until the merge. Yeah. So, uh, honestly, had she, uh, before the first swap, she would have, my thought is, I, I can't predict, but I, if I had to guess, I feel like I was in on, what was going on she would have been voted out tavua she would have been voted out and yeah. then um i don't know when she went to mana she might have been all right i'm not quite sure but then once she makes the merge um you know and now it's you want to get rid of ozzy you want to get rid of mm -hmm. andrea right you wanna, right yeah so we didn't. We might. We might have seen it in Surrey, but according to what we've talked about so far, you had sixteen final two alliances. So, because <laughs> you did what drives me nuts when I see people walk off on day one on their own, and I know they've already had their conversations, but you've got to talk to everybody. It's seventy percent social, twenty percent physical, and ten percent luck. You've yeah. got to talk to people. Yeah. So, who did you have one person from the beginning? Because this is what I imagine. Is there any one or two people that you had from the beginning that you thought this is my lock to go to the end, or at least this is the person I'm going to trust everything with? Or did you completely criminalize everyone and have everybody on <laughs> yeah. lockdown? This I is mean, what she said. This is the first person <laughs> I won't mind backstabbing. This is the second person <laughs> I will not mind backstabbing. Go ahead. Um, honestly, if I had to be honest, well, well, no, I didn't. I never had a number one that I wanted 
Uh, Sorry, Aubrey. Sorry. I, okay, no, no. Okay, Aubrey. <laughs> Aubrey, you were my number one. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, she was, and she still is. Um, gosh, it's a hard. Okay, I was never going to limit myself. So right. obviously, I wanted to keep every option I had open, and so it wasn't about. Um, it wasn't about not having anyone, you know, be my number one, but it was making sure that everybody was because I need, cause then if, if like, um, here's a perfect example with, um, Andrea and Aubrey, Andrea and I were close until the merge happened. And then Aubrey kind of steals Andrea from me. And so Andrea and I were each other's number one. And, but prior to all that, I wanted to work with Aubrey the whole time because we would see each other at uh, like challenges and we'd like wink at each other and like, yeah, you know, and give each other these good vibes. And I, and I, they were genuine, uh, I think on both sides until we met each other and we were playing the same game. And mm -hmm. now we don't like to play with each other anymore because Aubrey sniffed me out and knew what I was doing. The problem is I already had my hooks in so deep with Sari, which she would try to tell Sari, hey. Um, and then um, I kind of had my hooks in with Andrea long enough that I was able to get people to turn against Andrea before Aubrey could really, you know, dispel all of that. So um, prior to meeting Aubrey on the same tribe, I absolutely wanted to play with her. Once I did and she knew what I was up to, uh, we you know, we're like oil and water at that point. Um, well, I think this is very notable because I think sometimes we hear about people saying, I had my one true on day number two, but sometimes you work so hard to keep that one true and to work with the one true, you don't make the contacts when you get, to, and you're sitting with your one true at final against a third person and the third person's talked to everybody. Meanwhile, you worked with that one true so much, you did not get to spread yourself out. Whereas you made sincere efforts to engage with people and to right. talk to people and to plan with people. You didn't just socialize. You were making voting strategies with all these different people that we saw, which, which gets some validity to it as to your relationship to them. Yeah. Um, I, so the only time I really had a lockdown, what I was, I had locked in a final six or a final three with Brad and at six, but I wasn't still 100% sure I was going to stay to that depending mm -hmm. on how things went. But I, and we'll get to this later, I knew that was locked. So the game was over at six. Um, it really was. And we it. can we can get to that. But, Quote um, of the night. The it, game it, was over at six. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying. Okay. So I'm, I want to be the like. Finale was two hours of no, I like that. It's going out on Twitter right away. Well, <laughs> wait till I tell you how I, how I know that. And then you guys will go. And that's why it can't air the way that it happened. I mean, it does. Right. But that's why the whole story can't get told is because it'd be so obvious what's going to happen, who the final three was going right. to be. Okay. Because so we I have had the numbers. I have made a note so we can get to that. Would you like to hear what Aubrey, I'm sure you read it, but this is what Aubrey wrote I, in the yeah, chat room. I couldn't read it fast. I'm, I can't read good. You, you, you got to be careful with the chat room. You can get addicted to watching yeah, it yeah. and forget there's a conversation going on. I know, I've and that I did that. Times. You were asking me a question. Yeah. It's like, to read and yeah. Aubrey and Sunday are trying to take over the podcast. It's like Survivor Talk with A and S. So here we go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah, kidding. so tell me what she said. Sarah made an alliance with me contingent on the fact that if anything I said got back to her, I was toast, which was genius because I was on the <laughs> anytime someone says anything that moves. I was at the bottom at the merge and determined to prove I was reliable. Also, she said you have to be okay with me not voting with you all the time, which was super <laughs> which was super smart because it was premeditated but she warned me so i stayed with her a second longer than i should have because i was desperate that's the end of my two cents i promise she made the do and then she writes she made the duo with me based on what i valued and needed at the time it was insane she totally outplayed me no she didn't write that last part <laughs> so anyway. uh, no um but yeah it, it, it just, it just go ahead it just sounds like you knew how you knew how to play the game. It's like it was natural for you. I, I, I was watching you. I just kept watching you and going, wow, she's doing that and getting away with it. You know, it's just. I, I think it had a lot to do with the fact that you never had to look behind you and say, was that okay? 
that I said that everything right. you did, you said without consequence. It's, it's as if you were playing with house money or something. You, yep. you had nothing to lose. And like you had said, you had permission to play however you wanted to play. Yeah. And that, that takes a lot of stress off your back. Even talking to somebody about that, she even mentioned early about how she wanted to play and, and just, you know, it's, so, it's, it's gotta be something that, that allows you to be more free in what you do. Yeah. That's in Sunday's feedback, which we haven't heard yet. Do you, I know. Do you, do you want to go ahead and hear what Sunday had to say? Yeah, sure. Sorry, Hi, Dave and Dwayne and Sarah. This is Sunday. Uh, I want to come and say a couple of things, Sarah, about your game. And uh, first of all, just congratulations. I think you did an amazing job. I loved how you came back and changed your complete strategy for the game. When I played the first time, I feel like I played real similar to you. I came in as a youth pastor and really was concerned about my reputation and my example and I feel like you brought in some of those qualities of being an officer your first time and then when you came back you decided to completely change it on everyone and gave yourself permission to actually play the game and that's what I think is so amazing about how you carried yourself through you adapted and people don't realize if they don't know you from home they don't know how much you're actually adapting to play the game what was cool about your game is not only did you come and com play completely opposite, but you still utilize your training and your skill set from being an officer in the game. And I just thought that was so impressive. So kudos to you. I am so happy for you. You're amazing and hope to meet you in person someday. See you guys. Talk to you later. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you, Sunday. That was really nice of you to say about me. Um, but I, I, I have a feeling just by what Sunday said that she has regrets from her season two the same way that I did of, gosh, you know, I wanted to honor my profession. I don't want to drag, you know, Jesus's name through the mud right. and things like that. And then you have to realize that it is a game and, um, and it's okay because I'm sure when she got home, I, I obviously I, I want to ask her this stuff is, did people say, why didn't you just lie? Why didn't you do this? And you, and you feel like that would have been okay. I'm allowed to do that. And everybody's like, yeah. of course, it's a game. So, um, yeah, I had that same feeling. And if that's how she felt and if she got a chance to play again, and it, it sounds like, um, you know, she could do very well, especially yeah. if she gives herself permission to play that way. Yeah, we actually had a really good show with her. She came on. It was a really good show. If, if you want to hear her thoughts, oh, of course, you could talk to her, of course. But if you want to hear some more, you can go listen to it or watch it. So let's, let's talk about what you just said about your faith. Was your faith part of the game for you? Did it influence the game? Did it help you through the game at all? Yeah. Um, what's funny is on Dwayne's screen in the back, the, your Bible verse you have up there, I actually had that tattooed on my side that's what my tattoo says yeah mine does too i just <laughs> <laughs> um so um Extended version gotcha okay it says yeah. i can do all things through christ who strengthen who strengthens me philippians 4 13. yep and uh and so going into the game um you know i grew up a uh, baptist i go to a non-denominational church now but um faith has always, you know, been huge in, in my upbringing and whatnot. And, um, you know, that, that goes on to say when I was playing the game, you're out there and you're alone and it really does get lonely. And I remember days where I would walk up and down the beach and like, I would literally like the sky's so beautiful and like God created that scenery for us. And you just look at him and you're like, wow, you know, you did this, but then I could just talk to him all day long because you don't get to talk to people, you know, you know, I don't get, but I know God. And mm -hmm. so like to get to talk to him, that was like my comfort. And, you know, I didn't play the God card at all. And, and, um, because I, what, that was one thing I wouldn't do is, you know, I, I would swear on anything, but I would never swear on God. I, I don't take the Lord's name in vain ever. You never hear me say GDs or JCs or anything like that. It's just, those are, things I don't do do sometimes I say swear words. Well, yeah, but, um, I don't know. That's just, that's just how I am, you know? And so I really relied on, um, talking to God 
to calm me down and because you can get over anxious in that game and you need something that um can relax you and that you can and comfort you and you put your total trust in him that you know some days i would have such bad anxiety because i felt like maybe i said too much or didn't do enough or i shouldn't have said this or that and um it, I would just say, God, this is in your hands. Just please you, you, d direct me in the right path, which which way I should go. Now, do I am I saying, oh, if you believe in God, then you're going to win Survivor? No, that's not at all what I'm saying. No. What I'm what I'm getting at is, um, He was my rock out there, truly. And without God, emotionally, I wouldn't have been able to hold up to the right. demands of the game. Truly, I wouldn't have because it is so stressful. Yeah. Did now did you um you've talked about in an interview about what you were giving to your church from your winnings. Did you guys talk about that at all? Do y'all have those kind of conversations in the game when you're sitting around and just talking uh, about the winning? Yeah, so um when we were out there people people don't really talk about what they do with the money until like later on in the game and then it starts to hit um uh, reality kind of sets in, but a after the game um so I'm out there, and I remember we were maybe at four or five. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was four, and you know, people are we're just kind of BSing, and they're like, "Well, what would you do with the money?" And and you know, Brad's talking about how he'd buy a boat, and you know, others are I'd buy a house or go on vacation or this or that, and they're like, "Well, what would you do, Sarah?" And I said, "Well, you know, I I would probably do a house or or." retirement but the first 10 percent i would i would give back to god and you would have thought everybody's neck broke because they're like what you know you really you're gonna and then the questions i got were like 10 percent before or after taxes and it started <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and so it started to get to where now i'm having to defend myself and and they're like and then now I'm being questioned on, well, where in the Bible does it say you have to give 10%? And where in this and this and this? And I didn't have all the answers off the top of my head. And so I really felt defeated at the time. And I it really mm. felt like the devil, that was the devil at work, truly. And yeah. and I'll tell you, the, the greatest part of the whole story is when I, I came home on a Friday, and then I went um, to, to um, church on Sunday, and the entire message was about tithing. And I still have the sheet. I, I sh it's, it's upstairs, um, but I showed it to David earlier. And it answered every question I was asked out on the island. It gave, yeah. like My pastor gave me every answer to every question that was asked of me out there that I couldn't answer at the time. It was right. crazy. So then it, it, the story goes on even kind of cooler is um, – I met work after I won. Um, I went back to work last week and I'm telling one of my coworkers who's also a Christian, you know, get this, like, um, the, cause I, I, this is the first time I can talk about, you know, that experience I had at church when I first came mm -hmm. back. And right. I said, um, so get this, this is what happens. And then when I get home, this is what God did. Like at church, like the message was literally for me and it wasn't, mm -hmm. I mean, it was for everybody, right. but it, you know, but then I'm like, uh, I kid you not, I'm sitting in his office and a secretary comes through and hands me a card, a mail, like like people send mail, you know, duh. And I open it up and, um, you know, it, it's it's a card from a fan and it's a Bible verse on the front or, or um, and it basically says, you know, continue to praise God and, and spread, spread his word and teach his ways or whatever. And I'm like, here he comes again. Like, it's like he keeps... Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this is the second time he's done this to me now. And I, I'm telling you, if that doesn't tell you he's he's there and he's laughing at you and, and yeah. saying, I told you, just trust me, yeah. I don't know what does. I really don't. Yeah. You know, people give to what to what their priorities are, you know. And, right. uh, you know, and if your priority is your relationship with God and with Christ, then one of the things that you want to do is support the ministry of the uh of the church not a particular denomination of course but the the church the christian church and so you know it's a very natural thing to give that first 10 percent minimum you know mm -hmm. and uh and let god and let god do with it whatever he's going to do with it and then trust him with the rest right so so that so there you go 
Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and you know, like this, this podcast is perfect for it because you guys appreciate that story. Others don't necessarily yeah. appreciate the story. So it's nice to get to tell um, that, that story out there for people who yeah. do like to hear that because you know, not, it's not everybody's cup of tea and right. um, that's okay. I, I wish that people would hear that and, and it, it could change them. And what's great about this is now people have the opportunity to hear it. And, and right. so I'm telling you, um, I've seen his works and they're amazing. And once right. you, you know, um, put your faith in him, he can do amazing things with your life. Right. And, and it's I've not seen about, it firsthand. right. And it's not about the tithing. You know, if, if you're going, well, I don't want to be a Christian. I got to tithe. No, that's just happens to be what Sarah was dealing with out on the Island there, there, there towards the end. It's the relationship that you have with him, the uh, scriptures that you have in your heart and the, and the songs that that you, that that you sing and things like that; those things are what get you through uh, times like this. So, did you yeah. have any songs? Did you have any songs that you? Because you know I'm a worship guy, a, um, a singing guy. Did you have any songs? Did you be out on the beach going, um, "Chain Breaker"? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> no, th that song wasn't real um, huge when I was out there, but um, um, what? Okay, um. 10,000 reasons was a, yes. was a big one. And, um, then there's one by, um, the, uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman. It's love. Take me over. I really mm -hmm. like it. It's super upbeat. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. I really like that. Like, it's mm -hmm. actually a good, like workout song, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Haley's actually like a, a big Christian too. So at Ponderosa, once the game was over, we kind of shared some, I, I let her listen to that song cause I had it on my iPod and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, it was kind of cool. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, so. cool. So I have a question about Kageyan again. Sure. Sorry. When, when, when your friends and you were watching Kageyan, were they like, what are you doing? Or, I mean, what were the things that they said as they watched Kageyan with you? And then how was that different from when they watched Game Changers with you? Um, so we don't – we. Wyatt and I don't watch with anyone because we okay. really like to hear everything. And, okay. you know, everybody asks a hundred questions. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we just like to watch it at home. So, right. but, but every morning when I, or every Thursday when I would go back to work, um, you know, clearly my coworkers would, would grill me on what's this yeah. or that. And I think you got two different looks at, um, you got the one where I was really cocky my first season and, don't get me wrong. I'm sure I had cocky bouts in game changers, but I've also changed a lot. I had a child and I'm three years older at this point. And so, right. um, but I, I think I don't necessarily like how I came off in Kageon. Um, and you know, people would give you kind of crap, but also you have to realize I'm being set up because Tony's the winner, not, not being set up, but I don't win. So I don't get this phenomenal edit either, you know. Exactly, exactly, yes. People don't always understand that, that CBS has to tell the story based on who wins, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So, I mean, it's, why didn't I get a good edit? Well, you didn't win, you know. Right. And then, and then did your story fit into the story that they were telling? If not, you're not going to get shown. Sure. And, and that's just it. Like, um, Troy Zan deserved a lot more airtime than, than what he got. Uh, Troy and I were really close, but when it doesn't fit into the edit, like you said, because they have to tell the story of Sarah winning. Cause if they don't tell that story and they tell Troy Zan's story when he doesn't win, then people are like, wait, how did we get to this point? So yes. a lot of the season is told you know, obviously the producers know the outcome of the game. So they're telling a story based on, mm -hmm. um, you know, knowing the end result. Right. And they get to rewrite it as it, not rewrite, but show the parts that are going to be pertinent to the story. Yeah. But there were a lot of pertinent stuff that doesn't make, but you also have to realize it's 43 minutes after you take commercials out. You have yeah. a challenge and tribal council in there. So how much can you really show? Yeah, um, I would. I would hate to have to edit that. Oh, sure. And here's a fun fact. I don't really know if I, I I'm not going to use the guy's name, but um, I had a guy come up. He's a logger. I'd never heard of that. I guess those are people who. Oh, yes. They, um, they log everything that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. They watch. So he's like one of 10 who had to watch 
the season and uh, they would pick out like the stuff that's pertinent and whatnot. And he came up to me at the after party after the finale and said, um, I just have to tell you how incredible your game was. I got to watch, you know, every second of it. And you really, truly on day one had everybody. And I'm like, wow. and I felt like sometimes I feel like people still don't give me the credit I deserve. I feel like um, I played a good game and yeah. I feel like I played a great game. And I still feel like people don't want to give me the credit because maybe I wasn't a big name coming in, so they don't want to be wrong and be like, oh, well, Sarah really was, you know, this or that. But um, when someone can say that to me, I really, I, I don't care. Anyone else who is not a part of the season or whatever can have their own opinion. But when a logger comes up and says, wow, I didn't get to see you play, but I watched it and holy cow, I listened to everyone's confessionals and somehow you had them all. It was yeah. magnificent how you pulled that off. And, and I'll tell you, in the first, before the first swap, I remember going to confessionals and talking to the producers and saying, if we go to tribal council, I'm in big trouble because there's still 20 people, there's 20 people in the game right now, and I'm going, how do I keep everything straight? Who have I told what to? Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to keep everything straight. And so fortunately, we didn't go until the Sandra vote, which gave me time to like iron things out. But, but I did, I had built these powerful relationships and um, one-on-ones, three, you know, threesomes, and then big groups very early on. And I continued, I didn't let those just go to the wayside. I continued to make those strong every single day. And that was a lot of work um, yeah. and a lot of organizing <laughs> without paper, pen and paper, it's all has to be up here. So, um, yeah, I do. I think I played a really good game that a lot of people don't want to give me the credit for. All right. So that, wait, that, wait a minute. Hold I know on, you, David. Hold on. Because that plays in the I've Pat been silent for 45 minutes. So you better be, play, be quick. It plays in, it no, plays in the Patty's ahead, back. I mean, Patty's feedback is this. So I want to go ahead and finish this okay. out. Okay. So here's what Patty said. Hi, David. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Sarah. Congratulations, Sarah. Um, I just want to say that you really did an excellent job, and um, I'm so glad you won, and I really think that you uh, played an excellent game. Um, do you feel that some people have not been giving you enough credit or uh, has not been liking this season because – um, a female player won, and uh, how do you feel about this? I think you played an excellent game, and I think you played better than Tony even, and you didn't have, uh, like, medallions of power and and Trish putting out fires for you. You did an excellent job, I think, and uh, without even winning any uh, immunity challenges on top of it. I'm so proud of you, and... Uh, I would love to see you play again and prove them all, all wrong again and maybe uh, take over Sandra's crown. What do you think? <laughs> she ain't giving that up. No. Um, you know what? No, thank you so much, Patty. You literally summed up everything that I could say. Um, the way you said, I didn't win any immunities. Um, like People aren't giving me credit for that. I didn't have this idol that could be played at. Like It's basically an individual or an invisible individual immunity is what he was wearing around his neck because he never had to decide if he was going to play it because he could play it after the vote. Now I'm not discrediting Tony's game. He did play a great game. I'm not comparing my game to Tony. What I'm, what I'm getting at is what I didn't have when I played. I didn't have any individual immunities. I didn't have any hidden immunity idols. Did I get the legacy advantage? Yes. Is it an idol? Yes. But the way I had to go about getting it was not easy. And so, uh, and I was limited to when I could use, I was told when I could use it. So I don't even think that that's comparable to having an, um, an immunity idol because I didn't get to choose when I played it. I was told right. when I had to play it. Right. Um, so, so yeah, Patty like summed it up perfect. Like I, I didn't have, I was putting out my own fires. And um, like another thing I would do is 
you know, after tribal council, you go into lockdown before you get back to camp and whatnot. So I think what a lot of people do is kind of stew and they don't want to own up to what they did. So when I would flip, I would, um, the whole, you know, way back to the beach, I would figure out what, how I'm going to, um, talk to the people when we get back. And I want to be the first person to talk because they're stewing about, well, what's going on. And if, you know, again, if like it's you and Dwayne and I playing or, uh, you know, David, whatever, it's the three of us playing. Mm -hmm. If you two go talk first, you can start this whole, uh, uh power drive against Sarah. But if yeah. I can nip that in the bud before you two even get a chance, and anything that you have fueled on your, you know, in the time that we're in lockdown, then now I can dispel anything you were maybe going to talk about with each other. And then even if, um, you know, David was like, well, um, Dwayne, Sarah said this, and then I might have won Dwayne over and, and he goes, yeah, but David, remember she said this though. And so it was just a tactic that I would, um, want to, that's why, you know, the first flip I said to, do you guys want to know? It was me. Because yeah. I don't want people to speculate because how do I let people speculate and then them go, what well, was Sarah and it was Sarah. Right. And the second blame starts going on Sarah, that's not good. Because right. I think you also see it with the game, once your name is on the chopping block, it never comes off until you're voted out. It really doesn't. Um, Brad would have been voted out had he not continued to win immunities. And that's because his name got on the block early and it, it continued to follow. So I just think once those names come out there, they stay. Um, and I didn't ever want my name to come out there. Right. Um, I had so many questions pop up while y'all were talking, but I didn't want to interrupt because I love the flow that you are right. using. No, just tell me. But, remember, I told you just to tell me to be quiet. No, hey, I got all night. No, I don't I care about do the basketball. No, he, he's already told me no. Um, he, he, so – when we were talking a long time ago, like yesterday, about no, like an hour ago, but about Tony and how you said that when he found it, he was in all of a sudden he starts going and he's just, it's not stop. And I pictured one of those little spinner tops that you put the string to and you pull it and then you just drop it and it starts spinning. Yeah. I think that better describes your game because there's a difference between day one feeling people out and day one starting the conversation. And I feel like that's what that logger told you is that on day one, you started the conversation. You, you didn't look at people and say, oh, I wonder what Michaela's really like. Or you started talking to people or yeah. she wasn't on your group, but you know, you went up to people to Zeke who you didn't know and you started. And that's another notable thing for future players on day one. You don't have time to start feeling people out because other people are already starting to play the game. Right. And, and, but it's also a fine line. You have, you can't be, um, you know, what, from what I heard, I wasn't over there, but why Sierra, um, the Sierra Easton mm -hmm. was voted out. What I've been told is because she was talking to everyone. So it's a double edged sword talking to everyone. You have to talk to everyone without looking like you're talking to everyone. Yeah. And so if you're gathering firewood, um, you have short conversations and have it, have it be like, Hey, yeah, I want, I want this to work, but let's not let people know about us. And that's what right. I would tell. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. But but you, when you really sit there, if you would dissect what I said, you're like, well, why would you be ashamed of working with me then? Why do you care if people know <laughs> that we're working together? Yeah. You you don't want people to know because you got something else going and you want me to be your side piece. That's right. why, you know? Now yeah. we get that well scene of Sierra where she comes up and, and gives out a name where we saw six people before her not want to give out names. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and you're making me think about the idea of, of starting the game. And I go to you, Sarah, and say, Hey, so where are you from? And are you married? And we just talk about stuff in general and say, oh, I, 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 I think we really click. I think we'd work together. Well, there's a difference between that and me coming up to you and saying, you know what? I don't trust Dwayne. I can tell you right now, he should be the first one to go. I think we should go after him. And you think, well, you know what? I, I could probably go to Dwayne and get him right now because of what you just said. So yeah, I yeah. think there's a difference in how you, you know, Tasmanian devil, the group and how you approach them and do you converse with them, but you build first. And then, and then Dwayne goes to you after our first conversation where we just chatted about life. And he says, what do you think about David? David's a pretty nice guy. We talked about life and stuff. I think he's somebody I could work with. Do you think the three of us could work together? That's to me is how you build day one. And you yeah. don't go around saying, I think Sandra has got to go. Yeah, Flat out. exactly. She's my first vote, and then people say, "Well, 
Okay. She's going to start. She's calling Sandra today. She's going to call me tomorrow. You know, she's yeah. not looking to converse. She's looking to vote right now. And let's, let's back that up. So my question is though, Nuku first tribal council, if y'all lose the first event, who do you think goes that first tribal council? Uh, Sari. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that would have changed the game. Exactly. That's right. that perfect storm thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because she, honestly, I feel had Sari gone to tribal council before the merge, she would have been voted out. I, that's just my opinion based on, I feel like I was in the know pretty mm -hmm. well. Um, and so if I'm being honest now, I, I liked Sari and I was working with Sari until we had the whole steal a vote debacle. And, well, um, about that. once that happened, then obviously that burnt a, a major bridge between us. But I still, even though I knew everybody was after Sari, I still wanted to work with Sari in case things got flipped upside down or look what, look what happened. She makes the merge and, and so you don't write off the person that you think is going to get voted out because then you just close the door. You want to keep every door open. So yeah, Sari would have gone because the, the way the, the alliances would have lined up was Andrea was with Sari. Uh, and then Zeke, because Zeke and Andrea knew each other, but at this point we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so it would have been Ozzy, Brad, JT, Sierra, myself, and Ty. The six of us would have, I mean, the boys would have wanted Suri out, and that's where it, the vote would have gone. Yeah. So can we talk about the whole Suri thing? Yeah. Okay, so when you gave it to her you didn't realize she couldn't play it correct no you, i knew you, she couldn't play it uh, oh it, you did okay yeah so the confusion is is where troyzan you know Tro they don't show troyzan speaking up but we were operating on i was operating on the fact that it can't be stolen from me so when i give it to sari i don't say here you can have it i say if we come back it's mm -hmm. mine. That means mm -hmm. if I don't go home and you don't give it back, that's stealing it because this is the agreement we've made. That mm -hmm. in my head is the agreement. Right. Um, so I didn't really dissect the non-transferable at that time right. because that's how I just perceived it was, well, I'm going to let her hold on to it, but I'm not giving it to her um, to have. You know right. what I mean? Right. So, so she saw it as this huge hand of trust but it really wasn't that big of a sacrifice for you at all well sure because well here's the thing sari and i really were working tight together i think what's happening when she decides to play it, i don't feel as it's a sacrifice because one i don't ever think of her wanting to play it because i know she can't play it so it doesn't really cross my mind that she would because again she can't okay um, but she doesn't realize she can't I think she was getting to the point in the game where she needed to make a move. And Sari wanted Aubrey in our group. I wanted Ty in our group. Sari didn't trust Ty. I didn't trust Aubrey. Um, this was Sari's way of getting Ty out, kind of setting him up to vote me out. Because I think Ty was throwing a vote my way that night. And she was, her idea was, let me take Sarah's vote. We're all going to vote out Ty. Ty's going to vote Sarah. He's going to go home. And now I look like the hero who saved Sarah because Ty voted against you. I think that was the idea. But when I say it, when I just explain that to you, you're like, how did she ever expect that to work and come on? And that's what made it really ridiculous that she even attempted to do it because it was such a long shot for everything had to be perfect for that to even work out. Um, yeah. So it was, uh, it was not a good move on her part to do. And to her defense, though, I gave it to her, like, literally right before we go on lockdown, before we leave for tribal council. So she didn't, she, she had never even seen what it looked like. Um, right. Because I wrapped it up in my jacket and I put it in her bag is, is how I did that. So, um, yeah, that's so do you kinda, remember that night? Did you believe her when she tried to explain that? And were you really that upset as we saw on TV? Yeah, no, I didn't believe her because why would you take my vote? I'm the only one that can't write down Sarah, you know? So mm -hmm. it, to me, it doesn't make <laughs> sense that you're taking my vote because now it looks like you're trying to flip things on me. And so I'm sitting here going, what is she doing? And she's trying to tell me I'm trying to save you. And I think it was an attempt to make a big move. 
Yeah. I, she wasn't trying to get rid of me. She really wasn't. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, we're working as a partnership and this is not okay. Like we didn't agree upon this and I felt betrayed at that point. So the reason Michaela ended up going home and here's a fun fact that'll lead down the way. Troy Zan and I are very close out there. It doesn't get shown, but on the Andrea vote out that happened before Troy and I had sat on the beach, like far, far away. Cause I didn't want anyone to know Troy and I were talking and Troy Zan said, Sarah, you know, you're, you're like that girlfriend who cheats on you. And then you, you tell her, you know, I, I'm just done. You cheat on me. And she swears she won't do it again. And so you take her back, but then she cheats on you again. And then you take her back. And then, you know, that's what he's saying to me. He goes, how can I even trust you? And so I, I take my bracelet that I'm wearing and I go here, you can have this. I said, we're voting out Andrea. This bracelet, I wore it on my first season. Um, you know, it means the world to me, which it, it's, a, it's a bicycle spoke. I ride rag bri, so it's like a $7 bracelet. But mm -hmm. I, I actually, I dipped it in gold, so now it's like a $72 bracelet. <laughs> so it's <laughs> worth a little more now. But um, so I give it to Troy, and I'm like, if, if I'm lying to you, keep my bracelet, throw it in the fire, do whatever. So I give it to Troy Zan on the Andrea vote out. It goes that way. He gives me my bracelet back. We're good to go. So I've ruined my word that now I've had to go to like material items, you know, to solidify trust. So it's, it's funny if you go back and you watch it at the Michaela vote, when things go up in the air, I look at Brad and Troy Zan because I know that they're a tight pair. And I say, I first mouth Sari because I, right now I'm thinking emotionally yeah. And they kind of give me this look like, Sarah, like we will, but are you sure that's the, they don't want to, they're not trying to tell me or push me to do something. And then after I process it, I'm like, okay, don't make an emotional decision, make a strategic one. Mm -hmm. So reason in, in, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, in all four seasons or all four seasons she's played, she's never won an individual immunity, correct? Correct. So <laughs> Michaela is a challenge beast. Michaela is Ceri's right-hand man besides me. Uh, the three of us were in a final three also. So now I'm like, wait, Michaela. First of all, Brad will vote for Michaela because they don't like each other. And uh, Michaela is the next likely to win an immunity. And that's kind of cutting Ceri off at the knees. So I, I mouth Michaela to Brad and Troyzan, and they shake their head so, you know, hard that they're like absolutely but then brad's questionable be uh, on me because um so troy zan points at my bracelet i take it off and i give it to him and actually if you go back and you watch when troy zan votes he's wearing he has it around his hand in in his hands when he's holding up the vote for michaela mm -hmm. and so that's so that's how i got them to vote with me because he then turns to brad and says she's good because now this bracelet has m meant to them she's telling the truth so right. um but that goes on to where you don't get to see troy zan's game very much is brad and i didn't have the closest relationship troy zan and i did and mm -hmm. he was literally like the in-between guy for me and brad brad was really upset with me at, at points and you know he uh, i mean our personalities just clash and troy zan would literally come over and be like, well, this is what Brad's thinking, blah, blah, blah. And I would tell Troy Zan whatever. And then I would go, well, if Brad's okay with that, just tell him to like give me a thumbs up. And Brad and I would literally communicate just by a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you know, because Troy Zan was being the middleman, keeping – he was like the glue that kept our little threesome together because I don't know that Brad and I would have been able to make it work. And Troy really smoothed things out with Brad for me and it doesn't get shown. And I think that's why, you know, Troy's a little upset is because he's like, he's getting a lot of crap for not doing anything. Um, he helped me tremendously. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. um, and so I guess I don't, do, do you want me to go into the, how, why I say it's over at six or not? Before, before you do that, I, I do want to ask you, how were you able to, and I'm echoing in somebody's probably in Dwayne's, um, how were you able to maintain composure when Sierra said, if I get voted out, you can have my advantage. 
Well, so at first I'm like, wow, like she just told me this. She wants to work with me. And now I'm really contemplating keeping her because like she could be my ace in the hole where yeah. I know she won't. I mean, she was really laying it all on the line and we were really good friends. I know people laugh when I say that, but I did have genuine friendships with people out there. At the end of the day, you have to write someone's name down. It doesn't mean that our friendship was fake. It just means you were going to beat me. So you had to go, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, um, and, you would have done it to me too. I just did it first. So uh, when she says it right away, I was more so flattered and wanted to play with her. But then I'm like, time out. And because then we had the loved ones visit right after that. Mm -hmm. And I remember Wyatt and I went on a walk and um, I was telling him about it. And he's like, well, I really like Sierra, you know, because he had got to hang out with people at camp. And I'm like, but listen to what she told me. And when I tell him, you know, about it, then I'm like, I got to vote her out because I want that and I may need that. And he's like, well, yeah, you got to get rid of her. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we had talked about it there that she's got to go next because I need that as soon as possible and before she changes her mind. So, right. um, yeah. and so then you go up to her and go, you know what? You're like my best buddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're my girl. You're I my, had to lay it on thick. Yeah. Yeah. But I, um, that's the one where a lot of people can't sit there and go, well, you told me you weren't voting me out ever. Like the day that most people went home, I, if I was going to vote them out like Zeke or Andrea, I really didn't talk to them that much that day because I didn't want to lie to their face and be like, no, it's not you. I just, it, it doesn't feel good to do that. So I truly like the day Zeke went home, I didn't talk to him the whole day. And, um, uh, Sorry, I lost what I was saying. Um, it was about, about Sierra, Sierra, and you were telling her how yeah, awesome she was. But with Sierra, I did have to cross that line because I'm like, she's got. I got, you know, I got to throw the line out there and hope she bites because. Um, but, but you know what? That line may have bought you the three minutes it took her to will that advantage to you. Exactly, because, and and you know, water, she might have thought about it. Yeah, that <laughs> that and your <gasps> you went home. I know. And it was actually a lot more dramatic. And <laughs> Aubrey actually caught me um, doing that. And because I went and they don't show how like obvious I had made it. I, I thought I maybe overplayed it. And Aubrey's sitting right next to me and she looks at me and goes, you look confused. She is not impressed <laughs> by what I just did. And I go, mm, no. And she's like, what's wrong then? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like leave me alone. And yeah. I'm like, I just totally got busted. So then Aubrey looks at Andrea and she's like, Did you see Sarah? And then I'm like, knock it off. Like, so then <laughs> we're back at camp and I hear her saying it to Sari and Andrea. Well, yes. Sarah, something's up with Sarah. And I can hear her saying it. And I'm like, Aubrey, knock it off. Like you're blowing up my game right now, you know. But yeah, she totally caught me. But again, I had Sari, and she'll say this, like Sari just wouldn't listen when Aubrey was trying to tell her, we got to get rid of Sarah, you know, and and um, because I was in tight with Sari, but I was willing to get rid of Sari had it, had it come down to that. But I would also like to note that I never voted for Sari. Hmm. So people, right. you know, nobody it, did. It, it, right. Yeah, nobody did. No, nobody did. And, and so if she was like, oh, you turned on me or you, well, I didn't though. Um, you stole, you tried to steal my advantage and then you actually wrote my name down and I never wrote your name down. So to, to be upset with me in any way, shape or form, it is not my fault. You went home, you know? Right. So before we get down to the final six is locked in or it's done at that point, was there any other thing this, the whole season that stuck out in your head and said, oh, man, I can't wait to tell somebody about that? Or was there a situation, a conversation, other than the fact that there was more idols and advantages in play than the first 10 seasons of Survivor? Yeah. But was there anything else from the season that you, that you really wanted to share? Oh, gosh. You know, it's been like a year, uh, so it's really hard to like pinpoint things that I was really um, – <sighs> 
I, I don't know. Sorry, I'm dropping the ball on this. Uh, were, you, were you down that you'd never found an idol? Yeah, I, I wanted to find an idol. Um, and I looked, a lot of people are like, oh, nobody ever looks for idols. No, and I'm any fan out there that watches the show or viewer, whatever, don't ever say, well, they should have been looking for an idol. Every single person out there is constantly looking for an idol. They just don't show it. How fun would that be to watch people constantly look for idols? It wouldn't right. be fun at all. Right. Okay. Right. So they're not going to show that. But trust me when I tell you, when you walk to the water well, you're looking in everything. You're sticking your hand in every place. You're when you're walking on walks, when like we call an interview a walk, when you're walking going to a walk, you're not gonna find one because there's no camera with you. And right. <laughs> But you're still looking like it's crazy because you're, you're like, oh, well, no way am I going to find it right now because they can't have you find one without a camera being there. Right. Uh, right. But it's still it's so ingrained in everyone's head to constantly look that and people are so obsessed with it that they don't even hide it. Like if you're walking with somebody that you're just having a conversation with, you see them going like this and as you're having a conversation because they can't help themselves. So, yes, it, it, that's one of the most annoying things is when people are like, well, have you been looking? It's like we look 24-7. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so if Ty ever plays again, will he ever be allowed to walk off by himself without somebody <laughs> posting him? <laughs> and that's what we were worried about at six was um, once Ty played both his idols, we were – we re Brad Troyzan and myself had said everybody needs to watch Ty – because we need to make sure because five's the last time you can play an idol we got to make sure he doesn't get one because if they do right. one of us is going home you know so you know what really I, we'll still talk after you do this when we're not in no rush to get off off the uh, air with you but if, if wherever you want to start from start from there and talk us to the end because we'll just love hearing you talk about it and we may interject uh -huh. a little but I mean, like you were just at some point you were talking and you said, you want me to go ahead and go to final six or whatever. And I mean, let's just go there and just you, you talk and then we, we'll have some other stuff after that. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of set up the whole bracelet thing and where I said earlier that the game was over at six is um, Brad, Troyzan and myself go on the reward. And so Troyzan and I are the one that have done this bracelet exchange thing. And as we're sitting there, I now realize I'm not in good with Sari. I realize Aubrey's on to me and can tell what I'm doing. And now I'm not sure where Ty stands. So Brad and Troyzan are definitely my safest bet at this point. And um, plus Brad's safe. So as we're sitting there, I tell them about the legacy advantage. Troy tells me about his idol. So we all knew none of us were going home. So at this mm -hmm. point, I know, okay, none of us are going home. I need to I need to lock these two in a final three because we're gonna have the numbers and we can run the game at this point hands down. So um, I say we should all exchange a, a something that we all have, and I like give up my bracelet. You know, Troyzan gives up a bracelet. Troyzan has a ton of bracelets on, but he's like, well, which one do you want? And of course, I'm like, well, which one means the most to you? You know, because right. I want all the collateral I can get. Yeah. And then Brad's looking at me like, well, what do you want? My necklace? And I go, no, your wedding ring. And he, Whoa. yeah. And so also oh. for like, <laughs> so for, I know, sorry. <laughs> I had to, I had oh to. Oh my gosh. I know it's ruthless. It really is. But wow. listen. I had to secure my spot at this point because they were going to, I had a feeling if they didn't secure something. I, I would make it to five or four. And so, uh, and then, you know, I'd be that one that goes out because they thought that you were going to win. So I definitely had to get them locked. And as much as Brad, I've never heard someone talk about their wife so much. Like Brad truly loves yeah. his wife so much. So I knew that if I could get him to give me his wedding ring, the game's over. So, not only do we make this um, trade, I get both of their items, right? So I look at both of them and say, well, if Troy Zan decides to flip, then Brad, I'm still keeping your wedding ring. And Troy, if you decide to flip, then I'm, you know, I'm keeping both of your stuffs if, if either one of you goes, goes rogue on me. And then they wow. have my $7 bracelet that I'm like, Oh, do I, do I want them to throw it in the fire? No, but 
if I win a million dollars, I can go buy a hundred thousand of them. <laughs> right. <Bike shop>. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, really. So, uh, so then I, once I, once I got the wedding ring, I, I knew it was over. It, I, I truly, that was the moment I knew the game was over and I just won. I, I knew it right then. And so a lot of people question. So when we go into, um, five, well, we had already talked about how the votes were going to play out. We said, um, you know, let Ty play his idols first, then I'll get up and play mine. And then Troy hit every, like drop the mic with it and, and play yours. So, you know, I think if you watch, you can see the smiles on our face because we know what's going to happen. We want to kind of like entertain the jury too, because they don't know that Troy's got an idol and like, it's right. just going to be great. And they didn't know about both the ties. They obviously knew what I had, but it, it just, it, it was great. I, I really loved that, um, how yeah. it all went down. So, um, then at that, you know, we, we have the numbers now going forward. So the Aubrey vote was was because we felt that she would um, win an immunity. And really, Aubrey and I, like, hung out that whole day. We really had a fun day. We didn't talk any game. She knew she was going. She tried pitching something to Ty and I. But like I said, at this point, I'm not separating from the boys because I have them locked for sure. And so then mm -hmm. everybody's like, with the Ty – well, see, Sarah's not as good as she thinks she is because why didn't she have them make fire? Because then that guarantees her a spot because what if Brad and Troyzan would have flipped? Listen, people, I've got Brad's wedding ring. He ain't going anywhere. They're not writing my name down. Trust me. Like, it's not yeah. happening. They I just I don't just, know that. But yeah. yeah, and so people gave me a lot of crap for going, why wouldn't you take the guaranteed spot? Well, I did. I already knew I had the guaranteed spot. Did you share yeah. that in any confessional at all? Yeah, yeah. But but again, you can't portray well, no, no, that I because you see, guys would have known. Yeah, the producer, the camera guy's going on the phone and said, hey, I just – they're, they're uh, uh, we already have the final three. I know we got six. Burn the camera. You are not showing that confessional <laughs> to any – burn that – throw it in the ocean, do something. I could just see him going, yeah, I just wasted an hour. She yeah. just gave me the whole rest of the game, and I can't show it to anybody. Yeah, like like we still have three days to play, but let's just go to final tribal council now. Aubrey Ty, you're going now. The only way Aubrey and Ty wouldn't have gone had, um, well, Aubrey would have gone, but had Ty won immunity, the final immunity, mm -hmm. then it would have been weird. But I, I, Ty had promised me a spot too, so I and I truly believe Ty probably would have taken me to the end. So yep. um, I think I still go no matter what, but. You know, people are like, well, well, you know, make them make fire. And I'm, I'm going, well, these are my reasons for not. Ty's found three idols, two of which he's played for other people. Um, Ty sat out on the merge feast. Um, <clears throat> he was a, a big provider for us, you know, and, and so he has all these notches in his belt. If I have him make fire, well, first of all, takes the spotlight off of Sarah and puts it on Troy, Zan, and Ty for the whole jury to get to see, and they get to impress the jury with fire making because mm -hmm. I would be impressed if I watched somebody under that pressure fight for their life to get mm -hmm. to the final three. And so, and then if Troy's in, he found an idol, he played an idol, um, and, and, uh, hasn't made anyone mad. And, um, now if he makes fire to save his life, that might be enough to put him over the edge to, to win. Even All if right. no matter what I'm sitting in the final three. So I don't want the spotlight I don't want them to get to perform in front of the jury. Right. And so everybody's like, well, why don't you do that? Because it benefits me in no way. The only benefit is if I'm unsure that Brad and Troy are taking me to the final three, but I knew they were. Right. So making them make fire benefits me in zero way. And so uh, I hope people now can go, okay, she's not as dumb as we thought she was. <laughs> right, right. So I think it was Bruce that had a question about the jury in our, in our chat room about how did, how did it feel to have Michaela speak up for you after she got voted out with the advantage that was at her feet? Um, yeah, it was awesome that she could appreciate that and go, y y this was meant for me, not meant for me, but it, it was, it wasn't placed there for Michaela, but it was meant for the person who sat there. And not only did you take it from me, but she used it against me and sent me packing. And she's just like, if that's not a baller, I don't know what is. And and really it is kind of, uh, you know, a boss move to, to do. 
Um, but I wasn't targeting Michaela. You don't see up until that vote, I think it left a lot of people confused because they're like, wait, nobody ever said they're going to vote out Michaela. And it's the truth. It's uh, She just became the biggest threat at that point, and that's why she had to go. So, mm -hmm. but uh, but it was great to have her um, her support on that because who was going that tribal? Do you remember? Well, uh, if you ask me, Aubrey. Yeah. If you ask, okay. uh, if you ask Sari, hi, because she was going right. to take my vote. So, um, Aubrey was voting for Ty, and Ty was voting for Aubrey, and then pretty sure, and then everybody else was voting Ty. I, I don't know. It's, it's so long ago. It's I can't really remember a year ago. ago. Come on. It's only been a year. <laughs> I know, but um, because so much got switched up right there, it's really hard yeah. to remember. Um, I was voting Aubrey that time, but Sari was going to vote Ty. Uh, it, so. All yeah. right. Let me correct myself. Sorry. That was Carly's question. I, I had read it in her feedback, and for some reason I thought it was in the chat room. Thank you for Carly for straightening me on that. Yes. If, uh, yeah. And also she asked – Carly Marsh from Massena. Is it Massena, New York? That sounds about right. Yeah. She asked you, how did you feel when Michaela stood up for you, which David just did. But she also asked you, before the game started, did you consider aligning with Tony? I think we already talked about that, right? Yeah, um, definitely. I would have I would have loved to work with Tony, but I wouldn't have stuck my neck out. I mean, if it was him or me, obviously, it's going to be him going. But right. I def we weren't targeting each other. We didn't right. have an alliance, a pregame alliance. We definitely would have worked together. I think it would have been um, really fun to connect, and, and we would have had a good time. Do I think I would have won working with Tony? Probably not. But but no. I think I could sit next to Tony in the end and win. Definitely. Yeah. Boy, he was like a he was like a rabbit let out of the cage. Yeah. Oh my I gosh. Know. I know. When I watched, I'm like Tony. What were you thinking? Yeah. Like, and the whole spy bed or whatever that yeah mother. and you know what that no. was the demise of him if you think about it because he went up that night to finish it and then that's when he heard S sandra and troyzan talking and then he goes but up to him here's my little dig on tony for a second is you know, a lot of people want to go uh you know it, it, these these people had big targets and sarah the only reason you made it to the end is because you didn't have one well Actually, Tony and Sandra had the biggest targets, and they had an alliance together. But Tony misheard something. Instead of getting to the bottom of it, went overboard, and that's what ended up sending him home. Mm -hmm. When a sound mind had Tony, you know, been on his game and been the player that that he is, or that people say he is, he should have gotten to the bottom of the truth and figured out. What were you guys talking about? And now I get it when they say the tide and whatnot, but instead of approaching them and ambushing them at that second and being like, tell me, because they're on the, you know, defense right now, get them away one on one and then mm -hmm. ask Sandra. Sandra will tell you a story. Then ask Troyzan. If the stories match, you're good to go because they don't know that you caught them at this point. Mm -hmm. And so they haven't come up with a story that they're going to tell you because they don't know that you heard. Yeah. You know, um, um, so I, I, I feel like that would have been a smarter move for hi, for him to do uh, had he just relaxed a little, you know. I yeah. hope the non-supporters get a chance to listen to everything you've explained tonight because it, there's a book in this podcast about how to win Survivor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope they're listening. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, know, and yeah. I don't have a problem giving away all my secrets because I, I really – I know it's a it's a buzz kill for people to go. Would you play again? And I try to answer the question of, well, of course, if they ask me back. But realistically, no. How could I? I've ruined an, an all winter season. But an all winter season. I if know, it, but do you really even think I'd stand a chance? I don't think yes. I'd stand a chance. Um, sure. Nobody would believe a word out of my mouth. I <laughs> I don't know. So uh, it's like so I don't care. I will give away all my secrets on. If people want to know, because I like to watch the game and I like to see a good strategic game played. And if someone is listening and can take some of these tips and apply it to the game, I think that's awesome. Do you think, and I don't want to cut you off the way if you had something, but do you think the fact that your game cut off, got cut off at the start of the jury may have helped you this season by not seeing some of your tactics that you were able to employ this season? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and that's why when I was brought back, if you watch any of my pre or, or read any of my pregame press, you know, even the people writing uh, and interviewing us were, were kind of hard on me being like, well, why are you even here? And I'm like, okay, I get it for the fans. They don't get it because they only saw what was shown. And, but I lived it and I know how good of a game I actually played in Kagiyan. And again, like we've said, Troisian didn't get much airtime, but Troisian was playing actually a really good social game. Mm-hmm. And, but you only get what you see. And you guys don't know what happens unless we're telling you. So when I'm saying that I have this phenomenal social game and people laugh in my face about it, it's like, okay, well, I'll show you. Just watch. And it's, it's, and I'm saying that pregame before I even proved it, you know? So it's not like I'm saying it after the fact, after I played a great social game, I'm predicting it before because I know how I played and how capable I am at it. The fans just didn't get to see it because again, it goes back to not fitting the story. I was the first member of the jury, so it, it doesn't fit. So yes, going in, people look at Sarah like she's she's loyal. She'll be um, you. She'll stick with you, and and I think they they completely underestimated me. I'm glad they did, but it but I also don't like that when people say, well, but you didn't have a target, so that's why you did well. Well, I'll tell you what. If I played again, um, I'm going to the. I am going to have a target. I'm yeah. going to big targets too. And I'm going to say, look, we either stick together or we're screwed. Right. So let's take out the no names. You know, uh, nobody's a no name. If you get brought back, you're brought back for a reason. And I right. say that in my pregame. I go, anyone who thinks these people were brought back by mistake, they are foolish. Because they didn't bring back no names on a game changer season. They saw the producers have seen something in everyone to bring them back. That's why I was brought back. That's why Haley was. That's why Sierra was. So on right. and so forth. And Brad even, you know, P- Brad got a, a rash of hate too. And so, yeah, I, I don't sit there and say you didn't have a target and that's why it was easy for you. First of all, it wasn't easy for me. Second of all, I'm playing with two, three, and four time returning players that, that uh, know the game probably. I think other than Caleb and, and maybe Brad – I had the least amount of time in the game going mm. in. I only had 19 days. So they have much more experience than I do. And so I'm actually at a disadvantage. And, and people, if, if you're a target, then get with other targets and take out the right. no names if you're that good. Otherwise, don't sit there and go, well, the only reason Brad, Troy, Zan, and Sarah made it to the end is because they didn't have targets. No. Um, the target should stick together then. That's what any smart person would do, I, I would think. That's or, what I would do if I played again. Right. Or, I mean, the fact that you didn't have a target is a testament to how well you played. Right. Because you were able to make the moves that you made. You were able to control people the way you controlled them and yet still keep the target off of you. So, if anything, that's a a positive for you. And about the other stuff – Man, there's just some people that – there are people that as soon as I post a YouTube video, they go and just hit negative. I don't yeah, like it. Right? You know, it's, it's like people just want to talk crap about people all the time. Instead yeah. of just – it's just ridiculous. So – Yeah, you know. and that's why, that's why you know, it goes back to what the logger said. And I, I don't care. Anyone can trash me. I don't care. But that, what he told me was, you know, gold to me. And it's oh, like – that was enough to say, you know, he's not, it's, it's not one of my fellow castmates telling me, hey, you did a great job. It's some guy that is unaffiliated that doesn't know me that is like, wow. Right. And so for me, that's, that's enough of a compliment. I don't need anyone else to tell me I played a good or bad game. I don't really care. I know the game I played, uh, and that's the way it is. But, but right. really, you know, people go, oh, I, I will give people this. I don't come across the greatest on TV. I definitely don't. Um, I think I have a real droll sense of humor, and and that's just how how I am. And when you know me, like Ozzy at one point in the game goes, you know, you're actually really funny. And it's like you have to get to know me to get my sense of humor. And then once you do, people think I'm really funny. Yeah. But until you get that, you're like, huh? Because I come across really brash and serious, but 
my words can be very serious, but it's actually a joke that I'm saying. And, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that doesn't necessarily translate well on television. Plus, you're allowing me to ramble for, um, you know, 45 minutes. David's like, yeah, I know. And, mm-hmm. and, and this lets me explain my humor. And people are like, okay, maybe she's not as boring as we thought she was. But I will admit I'm boring on – I was boring, I felt, on this season. Uh, so I'll give so the – was the license plate thing a joke or was that serious? <laughs> yeah, serious. no, it's a total joke. Was oh, it good, really? Because okay, we laughed. Oh, man. We laughed. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm I... Like, who says stuff like that in real life? Like, what? See, she, she says that to the camera and then laughs. And the guy said, no, no, cut off the laugh. We don't want yeah, the laugh. Yeah, cut we off the laugh. Serious. She's so boring. We got to keep her boring. Keep her boring. Let's I cut in a, a part where she was very serious after she said it. Let's cut those two together. I know. No, like that stuff is funny. Yeah. Who, listen, on the other side of the camera is a producer sitting there laughing their butt off at what you're saying. So you think it's funny too, but it yeah. doesn't come sometimes, <laughs> did, like you yeah. said, the way it's edited. And, yeah. um, you know, they were, uh, I think someone was telling us for the final episode they had it made and then they even had to trim it 19 more minutes. That's how great it was. And then they had to trim it down even 19 more minutes. So think of yeah. all the stuff you miss out on. So oh, yeah, the, my jokes, I think just take a minute to get set up and then, and then they, I never get to tell the punchline. So everybody right. just <laughs> on TV, but like, she, they're like, what, what is she even saying? And she's, you know, like a robot. It's like, no, I, uh, the joke's funnier if I say it in a monotone. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> That's right. It was it was the wedding ring confessional is what it was. Oh, we got a wedding ring confessional? Yeah, what's it about? Oh, man. Oh, the fun- oh no, no. Can't cut that. Cut that. Cut right, that. What, right. What is- I know. Oh. All my good stuff didn't make. And here's some funny, like, uh, w- the, the 4th of July happened out there, and um, – and we had this huge, we took all the bamboo that we had left over and production's like, Hey, you guys just FYI, this is all you have. So if you, and we're like, well, did you see the shelter? It's crap anyway. Like the <laughs> shelter at Nuku was phenomenal. We, it was like, uh, we called it the hotel. We, I mean, it was beautiful when we merged and we found out we were going to the Mana beach. I hadn't been there yet. We walk up and it's literally bamboo uh, resting against a tree and they're, they're sleeping on the ground. We're like, what? how are we 20 days in and this is what you guys have? This is ridiculous. We were actually mad when we first showed up. Right. So, uh, at that point they're like, we're like 30, 30 days in maybe uh, on the 4th of July. And they're like, Hey, this is it for bamboo. If you go burn all this in this huge bonfire you want for the 4th of July, you're not getting more. And we're like, we're 30 days in. You really think we're going to build a shelter now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If yeah, you so, sleep it on the ground now, you're not going to last another three or four days. Right. So we literally <laughs> hauled it all down to the beach and we had this huge bonfire, biggest fire ever. And the wow. ba- bamboo actually like pops. So it's like fireworks and we were singing the yeah. Star Spangled Banner. It was hilarious. And then at one point, like um, one of the camera, the night crew was on. And so there was only one guy and he had to go up and, and get like another battery. So he left the camera down. So I start like filming people and like they're having this dance party. And it was like, I mean, we really had some fun times. Yeah. There. And that's that, awesome. of course, none of that's going to make it. Why but, couldn't they put that on just on the website or something? Just I know like we were scene. so, so Troy Zan and I have discussed that. We're like, oh my gosh, like the only secret scenes you get are boring confessionals, you know, and, mm-hmm. And why don't they show more camp life? Because there is some good camp life that happens, right. you know. And all the confessionals that make the secret scenes are us having to talk about the challenge. Like, you know, that's another thing. When you give an interview, it's not like they're like, oh, Sarah's boring. You should listen to her talk about this challenge. You really think I sat down and go, I want to tell everybody what just happened. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm being told, like, okay, so you guys went to the challenge. Uh, tell us what happened. And I'm like, all right, well, there was this balance beam and it was so great. You you know what I mean? Like it's, it's like, you don't necessarily get to run with what you want to talk about all the time. You do get to say things, but, um, but they have an agenda that they have to talk about too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't talk about it, then they say bye to you very quickly. Yeah. 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 Like you'll have a 10 minute session with them. Sure. 
Sure, yeah. because so. they have to – I mean, here's the thing. Survivor's 34 seasons in – well, 35. They know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they've got their crap together. So mm-hmm. to sit there and – I mean, they, it's not their first day on the beach. They know what they need to ask you and they know, you know, what you have to give them. So, um, uh, yeah, they just major props to the production. They do actually do a great job, especially with <laughs> what we give them. Like I said that in one of my, uh, when I was out there, I go, I really felt bad for the producers because some of my confessionals are just horrendous. And I'm like, they're probably like, Oh gosh, like this is our winner. And yeah. we got to try and make it like, <laughs> look good. And, and they're like, okay, seriously, Sarah, like, that's what we have. Ugh. All right, here it is. You know, is, so they were probably funny. actually worse than what you saw on TV, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing that I do want to do, if we, if you are willing to take the time to do it, but I want to do it towards the end is get your impression or get you to say something about every player that, that, that you play with. Yeah. But I also, but I think David and I have a few more questions. I really want to get to this final tribal council format yeah. and your, your thoughts on that. And you know, how long into it did Troy Zan start playing one man tic-tac-toe while y'all had your tribal council, you know, <laughs> it's just all kinds of stuff about the whole final tribal. So first of all, I mean, we'll just let it go, but what about yeah. this new format? Okay. So, um, <clears throat> We we go in, you know, kind of knowing the new format and oh, um, good. good and job. we everyone always it's it fascinates me how many people care about how long tribal council is. So <laughs> here you go. The final tribal I think got over about midnight that night, and we started at probably eight or eight thirty. So it was like the longest um, tribal council I had ever been to. It was it was. Um, and, and final tribal is very taxing on you because you're, you're in the hot seat the whole time. So first we start out with this, um, the, the out wet portion, right? Yeah. Yeah. Out, well, so, I don't remember which one he did first, but uh, like basically the social game yeah. and, um, in that, you know, it was, it was kind of geared more towards my game because Brad did the out playing as far as winning the challenges. So I got a lot of attention in the first section and Troy's in, um, Ozzy basically says to him at one point, like Troy's in, we don't even know why you're there. Nobody has a question for you. And wow. I'm like, yeah. And so I'm sitting next to Troy and like, they're being pretty brutal to us, but it's well-deserved. I mean, come on, we're sitting in the seats they want to be sitting in. So you just have to take your licks as, as they come. And, um, and Troy and I would look at each other at some point and we're just like, I can't wait for this to be over. Like, I mean, yeah. it was, it was truly awful, but again, that's the price that, pay, that you pay for sitting in the final three. Cause mm. they're going to say anything negative they can because they wish that they were sitting there. And yeah. well, I mean, I did the same thing in Kageon. Right. I gave Tony a hard time and just cause it's like, well, I'm going to give you a million dollars. So I'm going to make you sweat it a little bit. Yeah. So <clears throat> The, the first portion probably lasted like an hour and a half. And we're like, oh, my gosh, this is literally going to take forever if this continues to take this long because we're discussing so much because it's an open forum now to where I could say something. It might spur a question in someone else's mind, and then they start asking questions, and it just snowballs, you know, kind of like we're doing now. And But where it benefited me so much is because I got to explain p- parts of my game that – um, people didn't, uh, maybe necessarily see and they're like, Oh my gosh. Okay. So that's why she did that. And it maybe gave some clarity to, okay, she wasn't just being this fake backstabber. There was a rhyme or reason behind everything that she did. And it wasn't because she wasn't being genuine. It was because it was what she had to do. And it was the smartest move for her to do. So that allowed me to do that. Then we move into the out play portion. I knew Brad was going to kind of school me because obviously I didn't win any challenges. So he starts building this momentum because Ozzy and Debbie are, are congratulating him. And I'm like, Sarah, this is it. Um, if you don't speak up now, you might lose this game. So if Brad's going to be mad at you for saying anything, but I, I'm like, it's time to just throw Brad under the bus because you need this to win. 
So I just basically interrupt the whole thing and I go, he's a professional athlete. He should win, you know, and, and now I'm trying to discredit him in every way, which <laughs> I'm telling you to win five immunities. You, you what, how many people have done it? Two or three yeah. Ozzy and, and yes, Ozzy made that very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so, um, now I just have to make it not seem that big of a deal because Ozzy's selling it to the jury and Brad is too. And I'm like, okay, I need to make this seem like it's not a big deal and I need to point out his flaws. So mm -hmm. it really, it, it, instead of the jury, the old format where one person asks you a question, you might not have a chance to rebuttal or Ozzy could have got up and just praised Brad's game and then I don't get to say anything. But in this format, now I get a chance to rebuttal that even though he's praising Brad's game, it's right. an open forum now. So it, right. it was actually really. It, it really seems to me like this format <clears throat> really benefits a player who played a good game, right? Oh, because, for sure. Because yeah. you can, yeah, you can tell everyone how good of a game you yeah, played. You're having <laughs> a conversation. Right. When, right. when, yes. And in the old format, it's like you can only answer the questions that are asked of you so yeah. if someone asks you a question and it's doesn't give you a chance to showcase your game like yeah. name the type of animal you played like yeah that's stupid well okay i have 10 people that are going to ask questions this is one question okay now i don't get to really i have to try and right. pick an animal now yeah. or um tell me what your best move was and you're going okay well i have a lot but you only want to know one and you're not going to let me go on and on and on Right. So uh, it really limits you um, in that aspect. So, yeah, I love the fact that we had this new forum. And then so I was really fearful that each section, all three sections, were going to take an hour and a half. But they actually got smaller as we went. And the outplay was more so – or the outlast, that's the last one we went over – it turned into basically our closing statements yeah, because I think yeah. the jury was like, okay, we're done listening. We've kind of covered everything. And like I said, it, it ran probably four hours. I mean, it was awful. Right. And, um, and they're kind of like, we're done. We're tired of this. Let's, let's wrap this up. And, and so the out, like I said, that last portion ended up being closing statements. And Troy Zan has like the best closing statement ever. And I'm really surprised it didn't pull people his – like, I've been on a jury, so my mind was made up going in. I don't believe it when people say their mind's not made up. But had people really come in with an open mind, I think Troy Zan's final um, closing argument would have been enough to pull some votes his way. Well, that's interesting because what they showed us was him basically giving up and saying, okay, I, I know you all are going to vote them, and congratulations to them. I just enjoyed playing. That's yeah. not what really happened. Uh, no, right at the end, you know, he's the last one to speak and he literally hits on every single person on the jury and tells, I'll never forget this about you and this and this and this. And then he moves on to the next person and he'll say, Aubrey, thank you for, you know, this, I enjoyed doing this with you. And, and I mean, he touched everybody on a personal level, like yeah. where Brett, when Michaela asked Brad, tell me three things about myself or what yeah. do you know about me? And awesome. Brad couldn't do that. I yeah. mean, Troy literally went through every person on the jury and named like five things about them. Yeah. And it was just incredible. And wow. everybody was like, oh my gosh. They're like, we, I think they were probably like, well, we wish we could vote for you, but this was just a little too late. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so. I loved the new final, uh, final tribal format. I don't know that I like the outwit, outlast, outplay format of it. Right. Like it should just completely be open. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just let it be open. But I love it because it may, it, the conversation gets fluid and it's not in these little boxes. And like I was, I was going to say a minute ago, not only do they get to ask you a stupid question, they get to cut you off. Yeah. Or they not even to, ask you a question. Yeah. So mm -hmm. with this format, it just becomes this, yeah, it may take longer, but my goodness, you get a chance to really – talk about your game and one of the best things i loved about your final tribal that they showed us was how you just said look i'm a cop and this is how i played and i'm not you know this is being a cop helped me be able to do this and right 
just sold it. And I yeah. and you had that opportunity. I, exactly. It, and it did. Time it, when you did it. Yeah. See? Um, I, yeah, I, absolutely. I think it, it benefited me. And really to sit there and say, oh, it was awful. It takes this long. No, I played 39 days to get to this point. It can't be too long. It right. can only be too short because if, if you don't say everything you need to say right now, mm -hmm. You're never going to get that chance because they're going to vote right now. Yeah. And so even if we had to stay there all night, we had to continue as long as they wanted to go. And as long as I had something to say and Jeff was going to allow that, you know, he's like, is everyone good? Like everyone was good to go when it was done. Really no questions anymore. And, and so it was cool. Then after we wrapped up and everything, um, my first season, they didn't do this. You know, Jeff kind of walked off with the votes. Well, he can he came back and we had this big like party. They got champagne out. Oh, wow. Um, cool. And they, they covered the, uh, fire with like plywood and me and Troy's aunt, and they brought a ton of pizza out. Troy and I sat down and ate and it was the whole crew, like Jeff, all the producers, um, cameramen, whatever, uh, and all the cast. We got to celebrate there on the final tribal set and, and, you know, we had a toast and whatnot. And it was just, it was really cool to get to thank everyone there Yeah. because after Kagiyan, you know, we kind of got done. We go straight to Ponderosa. You didn't really get to tell like the cameramen or the producers, Hey, you know, thanks for putting up with us because right. uh, a returning season is not probably fun to put up with because, you know, your first season, you really follow the rules. Well, your second season, you get a little bit more rambunctious and ornery. And so I'm sure they wanted to rip their hair out when they got done with us. <laughs> yeah. Like, stop talking. There's not a camera there. Shut up. It, exactly. Like, Too like, bad. I'm going to keep talking. And that's what happened a lot. Like, yeah. so, so amongst all the, all the champagne and the pizza and the hugs and the thank yous, I'm going to take a guess that you are running the jury votes in your head trying to figure out who voted for who and how many votes you were going to win by. Is that, is that close? Yeah. Um, yes. And at that point, so <clears throat> I was very confident at that point because Zeke comes up to me and he goes, congratulations, you just won. And so uh, I feel pretty confident at this point because it's all over. And, and I had really shut Brad down. Um, he, he got upset when, you know, and didn't really compose himself at the end of it. So I really did feel like I had won. Then the next day, I'm also feeling like I won, and I'm talking to the uh, the therapist because everybody has to, and I'm just telling her, no, I'm great. I don't have any issues. I just won a million dollars, you know. <laughs> and but then, then as we get closer to the uh, to the end of the day, it really starts to hit me that okay, wait a second. Debbie didn't vote for me. Ozzy didn't vote for me. Um, I don't think Sierra voted for me. And now I'm really, I'm like, and now Sari seems like she's mad at me. And Andrea is really hurt by me. And I'm just starting to add all these up and I'm going, I don't think I won. And so right away when I, when I land and I call Wyatt, he's like, well, you know what happened? Cause the last time he saw me was at nine and I go, I'm not sure. And he's like, well, what do you mean you're not sure? Were you in the final three or you're not? I'm like, well, yeah, I was. And he goes, so you won? And I go, well, I'm not sure. He goes, well, how, do you, he's like, how do you not know? And I'm like, well, I think, and uh, you know, so it just, I mean, it drives you nuts. Oh, Wyatt. I know. <laughs> he just got and, you back and now he's got to deal with this till the finale. And get that. I mean, oh. Okay. Every day we probably counted the votes down. Every day. One day wow. I'd be like, Yep, we won. We're gonna this did is what you, we're gonna do with the money. Did you just reach out? Did you just say did you just text, you know, anybody and say, Hey dude, who'd you vote for? Um, yeah. yeah, people would tell me they voted for me, but part of you doesn't totally believe it. Yeah. Because yeah. they're telling you it now after the fact, but when they yeah. cast their vote, that was when the emotion was there. So right. it's like are you saying it? Uh, it's a cruel joke if you are lying about it. Right, right. right. <laughs> but you just, uh, you just can't take the police officer out of the girl. She's going to be uh, su su suspect of everyone. Yeah. You do. And so, because t tell me that wouldn't have been the biggest letdown to sit there and think that I just won. And, oh, yeah. I, and I did. I had a scare because so Wyatt and I discussed. I go, well, this is how the votes are going to be read. It's going to be seven to three. So it'll go Sarah, Brad, 
Sarah, Brad, Sarah, Brad, Sarah, 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 and then the final vote won't be read. So when we're sitting up there, I'm like 90% sure I win. And he goes, Sarah, I'm like, yep, I won. He's like, Brad, I'm like, yep, I won. Sarah, yep, I won. Brad, yep, I won. Brad, what? And I'm like, because mm -mm. he did two back-to-back -back Brads, and I'm like, wait a second. Oh, I got to go back rest? and watch that now. I got to go yeah. back and watch that moment now. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, are the rest of the votes Brad now? Because why did he do a back-to-back -back Brad? This isn't making sense to me. And then the next one was like Sarah, and I'm still kind of sketchy. I'm like, and it's funny because Wyatt said his heart sank too when he saw two back-to-back -back on Brad. Uh. It's almost like the last little, like Jeff, <laughs> he has a way of doing it. And, you know, there's, he, trust me, there's more behind the scenes than what people think. And that's part of it is what is going to get the best reaction out of mm -hmm. the vote read. And they discuss it and, and they did a great job because they got me because I and it they did probably it. Got Brad. They probably got Brad. He probably was like, going, Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, I, I know. Maybe I didn't, I didn't ask him, but um, I definitely, my heart sank, Wyatt's heart sank. And then it was relief and, and um yeah now it, it, it's so nice to not have to wonder anymore you know yeah. i wondered for a really long time see i always kind of figured that you know because they all kind of tell you i mean even at the i was watching somebody's live feed like the night before at the party and they were like oh yeah we, we already know who won everybody's already talking about it yeah um well sure everyone but but i had told tony he won and Tony, when he refused to believe it too, uh, yeah. we don't. Nobody wants to believe they won a million dollars and not know that they did because it's a huge letdown if you didn't win. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's like you um, don't believe it until it's actually done. Yeah, and like Troy, Zan, and Brad were convinced I won too. But and yeah. everyone's like, Sarah, come on, you won. Like, what are you even doubting? And it's like, but I, I have to see it to believe it because. Yeah it really would be a huge letdown. So I think you see that with a lot of winners. If you'd go back and you'd ask them, they'd say, well, I was pretty sure, but nobody's a hundred percent. Sandra has told me she didn't know both times. Wow. wow. He actually went in on heroes villains thinking that poverty won. Wow. So, um, she, so she said, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, you know, it's, yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. Um, wow but it's such a relief now to have it all over with, yeah. but, um, well, go, go, uh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I sorry. know. I know. I hate to say this, but I, I probably need to wrap it up. Okay. I would love to do this again. Um, but, uh, it's getting past my bedtime and oh. I got to work in the morning. <laughs> I, understand. I understand. Um, so, but definitely at any time, if you guys invite me back, I would love to chat more. If you have more questions or if people, we got this podcast next season that we're doing for this, this, this heroes <laughs> and healers and yeah. hustlers. And if you'd love to come on one of the episodes and help us do a discussion recap, we would love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this, it's been great. I've, I thank you for letting me get my site out there and, yeah. I know, David, you're probably like, I had to listen to you this whole time and didn't get a talk. Oh, no, 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 that's just me being hard on Dwayne. It was probably five minutes, yeah. but I just told him that. Um, yeah. But no, I really appreciate the chance to um, get my side of the story out there. And, yeah. and Well, I, I don't want to give somebody, if you just let me read another feedback. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the name. It's Mat Matuids from I cannot pronounce it. Somebody from Poland. Okay. All right. Congratulations, Sarah. Well deserved win. Did you get along with Michaela on the island? And were you surprised to see all the animosity towards her on screen? Did we did we talk about that? Yeah. Um uh, Michaela and I, I kind of took Michaela under my wings, redid two right at the merge because really she didn't have anyone to work with because uh, mm -hmm. you saw that with the Haley Michaela split vote. So um, I got along with Michaela just fine, but I will say that she did rub a lot of people the wrong way. Okay. I personally, I, I like her, but I think I like everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She had 19 final two alliances. Keep that in yes, mind. Yes. 19 <laughs> final two alliances. It and is. then she says, in, in addition, you played a great game, but is there any move that you regret? No, I won. I mean, what? Yeah, can, that's I, what mean, I'm thinking, yeah. yeah I, I mean, why would I? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't regret anything. Yeah, I won. 
you change one thing up, I'm telling you, it has to be a perfect storm and you change one thing and it's no longer a perfect storm. So I r truly believe right. I had the perfect storm. And because um, I won't say that a game was 100% all Sarah, that she did everything perfect. There has to be, um, you're right, luck involved. There, yeah. There's luck in every, every single person who's won the game has had luck involved. And there's so, the buff draw. Whenever you swap, swap tries and you draw the buff, there's, there's a luck right there. And right, right. and so, or uh, putting on the right robe that's got the clue to the idol in it at a reward, or drinking the right pop bottle that's got the, you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, um, I would definitely say I wouldn't change anything because I won. So, um, yeah, no, I don't. I, yeah, the check's got the right name on it, so it's good. Yeah, absolutely. And your uh, church is happy. <laughs> yeah, you know what? And my pastor is actually on vacation right now, and so um, so I haven't gotten to give them their check yet. But yeah. well, um, they got the street sign ready. Sarah Lucina yeah. Boulevard. Yeah, so no, no. <laughs> USA Today said she tied her money. <laughs> yeah. her I am. I'm actually going to take the check and put a hole in it and tie it on my church. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you, of course, for coming on the show, and we'll do a couple things after you get off, but I also want to let people know that you're going to be interviewing with Rob this Saturday. Yep. And that'll be record. I, I think the way he does it is he records it, and then he goes and edits it and stuff, so it'll go out later. It won't go out on Saturday. I think it's yeah. an audio only, if I'm correct. Yep, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So you'll, you'll have fun doing that. You're going to reach thousands of more people with your story and I'm very happy yeah. about that for you because you're going because people need to hear you know what you're saying and they need to recognize how you truly played a, a great game yeah, yeah and, and, and I hope you have the opportunity to uh, give God some glory for what he's done in your life and uh, and for how he helped you to uh, to make it through those difficult times yeah you know? definitely I hope you have that that opportunity so uh, we are well, and and like I said, I think I have. You know, it just so happens this is the first podcast I've done, and and right. my you have my tattoo on your your board behind. It just maybe this is another way of God saying "gotcha" again. You know, yeah. and so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what What's crazy is I I've been doing this all season. I have a different verse up. Um, it's just my way of because we don't like come right out and just witness to everybody. Sure. You know. Because but, it, yeah. Right. Well, sense. we're a family friendly show. And why are we family friendly? We're two Christian guys. I'm a worship pastor and, oh. and all this kind of stuff. And so I've been doing this all season. I had another verse picked out <clears throat> until about an hour before the show. You're kidding me. Mm -mm. And then my wife came up and I said, I think we're supposed to do this verse. And she and, came and OK, tell me, you didn't know about my tattoo, correct? No, I didn't know about your tattoo. I, I know. So look, it's just another way of God going. Yeah. I mean, come on, he's showing up right there. I, right. I mean, and yeah. if people ever doubt, we've given several examples of where he has shown up just yeah. in my life. And, and so this is him again. It's, it's, it's insane. Um, we're here because of God and, and we should live for God. And yep. if you don't, he will do wonderful things in your life. If you just allow him to. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Test I me and I will drown you in blessings. Yeah, that's right. And he is, he is. Yeah, <laughs> a million blessings. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't has blessed me with a million. I tell you what, he has blessed me with a wonderful wife, a wonderful yeah. ministry, three great boys, a wonderful, uh, wonderful parents. You know, a best friend like like David. The opportunity to be able to talk to people like you, just so many things. Sure. So. Yeah. Anyway. Priceless things. Yep. So thank you for being on our show. Yeah, have fun with guys. Rob. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you for again sure. later for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. All right. All right. So you can go ahead and hang up, and me and David will continue for a little bit. Okay. Um, All right. Let me see if I can figure this out. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, that was awesome. Another hour. And she is not a she does not talk as much as she thinks she does. I just didn't want to stop because I kept getting questions from all of her comments and I wanted to write them down. And by the time I get back to listening, she's on something else and I get a question from that. And it was oh so hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said the Fortnite thing. I was kidding. But I was like, come on, I want to ask something. She's yeah. <laughs> first you insult her hair and then you tell her she's talking too much. Hey, I didn't do it on the air, you just did. So <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, I didn't insult her hair. <laughs> well, what a great show. And I'm so glad that she um, and, allowed us to have her on the show. So, yes, that was awesome. Go, go ahead, David. What? Awesome. No, no. I'm just saying I did that off the air and you just brought it up again. Oh, it's no. that was off. The- I know. Nobody's listening it's, anymore anyway. She's gone. Yeah, so everybody's we've got people still listening, buddy. Nah. So, uh, Kirk, I will talk to you later about why you're. <laughs> I wrote that in the thing. Kirk, I'm not going to play your feedback. And he left the chat room. But there's a reason, and I'll tell it to you later. Uh, let's see. Oh, go and read Ryan Kaiser's blog. David, we got an iTunes review. All right. Uh-oh. And it says, interesting duo. There you go. <laughs> Rating five stars and may sometimes run too long, but otherwise great content. <laughs> Must As be talking about our this, interviews. Yeah, two hours and 20 minutes into the show. And this is really kind of, you know, this is kind of average for us. Two hours. Yeah, I was going to say, this wasn't long. Yeah, but I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. So, boy, lots of good in- information from her. Looking forward to getting this out there. Uh, if you're still with us, thank you for hanging around. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing it. Keep on sharing it so people can watch it. Uh, if you'd like to support our podcast financially, you can do that. STWDD.com. You can become a monthly patron for as little as a one or two dollars a month. There's different levels and perks that go with them. And all of that's at STWDD.com slash support. You can also shop Amazon with any of our links and uh, help us that. So that's it for me. David, do you have any final words before we tell everybody goodbye? Since I'm the only person in this podcast that did not say it, I will say, like you and Sarah both said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. There you go. Done. All right. All right, everybody. We will see you later. See ya. Oh, what happened? <laughs> that was a total fail. Ha <laughs> <laughs>